let me just get you back on so I can hear you. This is it, my little Kodak. Okay. Kodak Pix Pro AZ528. Uh, you can tell that's a Walmart. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's uh, legit. This has been my go-to for a while now. This is what I use to record conventions with and just my videos with, honestly. I do plan to one day get an actual, like, legitimately, like, one of those handheld, like, I am so artsy type <laughs> cameras. <laughs> I'm like a thespian. But no, I'm just fine with this. Like it, it for like $120 from like back in 2017. Yeah, 2017 is when I got this. It's not that bad. It's a pain in the butt that I got the mini game PC right here. That's a 400 something dollar game PC that doesn't have like a. Uh... Oh, there we are. There it is. There you go. Yeah, is this, this what thing, you added on? Uh, this is my new PC, yeah. Nice. $400, and I've already added more RAM and SSD. Oh, there you go. Dude, the SSD helps so much. Oh, you. yes, it does. But I am not technologically smart. I'm still trying to learn technology. Like, <laughs> I grew up in the 90s. The most I know is... Did it run? Does it run Windows 95? <laughs> Can't run Doom. Doom, baby. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, dude, for you're definitely you're you're being um humble right now. I, I understand that, but your uh, your YouTube channel, <laughs> you've got some decent videos, man. Not only decent videos, but you've got almost 10 years of videos on here and 3,000 videos mm. on youtube that's impressive i, I want to thank the influences of my grandpa and being autistic <laughs> uh, my late grandpa whenever and this is an honest true thing yeah when i was in high school i wanted to join up i wanted to do my part i wanted to serve my country because i came from a service family i was always told you got to do your part you got to join up you got to fight the communists you got to stop these bastards from taking over america and i was all for it Army rejected me. Marines rejected me. Didn't even try for the Air Force. I knew I wasn't going to get an Air Force. You need a college degree for Air Force. Navy rejected me. Coast Guard rejected me. The State Guard rejected me because I was autistic. Oh. Uh, but do you, do you grandpa, have to take medication? Is that what it was? The uh, medication uh, part? No, just autistic. Uh, psychologically, I was okay. not fit for service. Yeah. Basically, they didn't want to take me. <laughs> so the the one guy I talked to um, recently, one of the guys I talked to recently, he had, uh, I don't know if it was like bipolar type of stuff, but he had medication and same thing with him. They wouldn't take him. And I, I know one thing for sure is uh, any kind of anything like that where it's required medication they can't guarantee if you're on the front lines or if you're, you know, on the battlefield somewhere, they can't guarantee you can have medication. So if somebody's not be able, you know, able to function without their medication, they won't, they won't even take you because it's not oh. going to be a guarantee that, you know, so I can understand that. But yeah, one of the, yeah, it's, uh, but I guess the autistic thing, does that fall under like, um, a mental um, part, right? Yeah, it from or psych. Understand, it, it goes under psych or psychology. I, I believe so. It falls under the psych eval yeah. type deal. And the sad thing is that I was all for it. Like I was all for just going to do my part, serve my country. I love yeah. my country. I love America. And when I found out that I was rejected by all these branches, even the state guard, not the yeah. national guard, the state guard, I was heartbroken. I'm sure. And my grandpa, who was a Vietnam veteran, God rest his soul, he set me aside and told me, Alex, God put you on this earth for a reason. And that reason is to make people smile. And that's all. That's all I do. That's why I do YouTube. I just love making people smile. I love making people laugh, be it with me, at me. I don't care. <laughs> if I can brighten up your day by making myself a fool or a fool of myself, there goes my autistic grammar. <laughs> then, <laughs> That's what I'll do. I I do not care if people hate me. If I make you at least do something with your life, I've done something. Yeah. I've done something. That is good, man. Yeah, it's a good attitude. It really is. I mean, it helps with the depression, but <laughs> <laughs> because we can't we can't control what people think about us, and sometimes people aren't going to like us literally just because of personality conflict. Like that's just. Mm -hmm. 
uh, clashing personalities, which happens, right? Oh, yeah. That's oh, something yeah. you're born with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, mostly. So it could be the sound of our voice because, you know, a lot of our human existence is based on like vibration, right? Mm -hmm. Frequency. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it could just be somebody's voice. Like I've gone through, you know, radio stations where hosts, I, I'm just like, oh, dude, I can't listen to this person. <laughs> and they might be a great person. I don't hate them. I just, I, dude, I can't be around your voice, <laughs> but it I happens. Totally understand it that. happens. I, I really do. I really do. Like, yeah, I, I fully get that. And and the good thing is that when it comes to airsoft, especially, let me adjust my camera real quick so I can get my full body into frame somewhat. <laughs> there we go. Now you can see both my hands because I'm, I'm, I'm a very handsy person. Yeah. Not like that, but, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. You can say that till after the podcast here. Okay. We don't need that on camera. <laughs> no, no, we do that. There we go. There we go. Alex's yeah. special time can be after. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. I can't. What is it like? It yeah, keeps turning. Christ. It keeps turning. Look. Ah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Look, it keeps what turning. The... It's still turning. Ah. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Let, me, let me try something. Let me try something. Let me, let me put this wire behind my flashlights here. Here we go. Let me just. Well, you, uh -huh. you adjust that. I'm going to I'm gonna do uh -huh. the um, sponsor shout out here. Go for ahead. the episode yeah Go uh skirmish yeah thank you for the uh <laughs> thank you for the sponsors of this episode uh skirmish and uh jack tack.com jackal tactical uh go to skirmish.net to find out more about the skirmish system it is uh the top of the line in my opinion ahead of its time it's going to make a huge impact in the whole airsoft community uh, one of these days when people realize all that it can do, um, go to skirmish.net to find out more. And if your local field doesn't have it or your event doesn't have it, reach out to the event coordinator or the field owner and ask them about getting it. It's very easy to get. Uh, and then Jackal Tactical out of PA has a couple storefronts and fields that they run up there. Appreciate you guys being a sponsor of the podcast, skirmish.net jacktac.com to get all of your airsoft info yes and uh, a little something i think a lot of people don't understand uh I, no joke i did not know this until i was way older yeah so bringing back some 90s memories about to unlock some core memories for all us 90s kids and those who grew up in the <laughs> 90s the mummy when i first saw the jackal heads and i always thought the jackals were like these big scary creatures I had a neighbor who had act who actually raised Egyptian jackals. Are you talking and about like the they, Anubis looking head? Yeah, the Anubis yeah. heads. Anubis, yeah, and, that's it. Yeah, and I was just like, I was terrified as a kid of these right. things. And it wasn't until I actually met these dogs in real life that I'm like, oh my god, these are the sweetest puppies ever. They're really skinny and they're really scrawny, but they're so cute and puppy. Their ears are so pointy. Ah, I don't <laughs> want to thank you. And now I'm just like, hey, you know what, jackal, ta jackal tactical. Thank you for naming yourselves after probably one of the skinniest yet fun canine species on the planet. I'm just saying that right now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah, getting into Airsoft, actually, this is something that actually kind of is something I want to talk to people about when it comes to autism. Um, I am very good at taking stuff apart. I am very good at being, like, hyper-focused. Like, I can okay. tell you the intricate intricacies of an ar-15 over an interpersonal relationship that is how good i am but when it came to autism and me growing up i and this is a lot of autistic people a lot of us autistic people our emotions are on a dime can go from extremely happy in the moment just excited on the cusp of life to extreme depression mm. just sad on, on a flip or just extremely angry like if you watch a lot of my angry reviews especially media reviews a lot of those people say oh i'm just hamming it up i'm just acting angry no that is my legitimate really? anger yeah that's okay. my legitimate anger towards either a product or a story or god forbid an author question can i cuss on this podcast yeah, absolutely there's no rules on here Oh, thank fucking God, because let me tell you right now, this one <laughs> motherfucker, he pissed me off so goddamn bad that, dear Christ, on a sugar-coated stick, I wanted to beat him so bad. And it was just... What, was this somebody on your uh, comments or something? 
No, this was an author. Oh. Who was making a story and he fetishized a certain uh, action you're not supposed to do in polite society or you may go to jail for. Okay. SA. Uh, I don't know. I'm a little you slow. Know. I'm a little slow. R E P S A R. Oh, you're spelling the word? No, no, no. R A P E. Oh, rape. Okay. Yeah, he fetishized it. Okay, fetishized. What do you mean? As in, he made it seem like it's okay to do that to defenseless people. Oh, I got you. Okay. And that did not vibe well with me. No. Like, if you want to make that kind of story, go ahead and make that kind of a smut story. Don't try to make this as a plot point for an actual story and then claim, oh, the U.S. Army will happily send in soldiers who are mentally unstable into combat zones, even though they've already been Section 8 out of the military. <laughs> this guy pissed me off so bad. Like, now, was this was he writing a novel? Is this what he was doing? He was writing a fan fiction, a, a okay. gate fan fiction, which are a dime a dozen in the fan fiction community. Gotcha. And it was so bad that people were calling him out on. And the worst part is he had an actual pedophile on his writing team. Okay. Honest to God. And he I had to call him out. And everyone was saying, Oh, I'm the villain. I'm the villain. I don't know what I'm talking about. Stuff came out about the guy. And now the author is doing major ground damage control. And I'm just sitting here smiling like, I told you. Yeah. I told you. Like, how, but, but, how, <laughs> how, I'm trying to figure out how people could say you're the bad guy when you're calling out something that's bad. Oh, it gets worse in, in the fan fiction <laughs> community. Like, like, like Airsoft, we think, oh, Airsoft has got some bad eggs. Yeah, it's got some drama, right? Yeah. Brother in Christ, you have <laughs> never been in the fan fiction community. And that's the problem. My channel, when I did the media reviews, the first one was basically just a, hey, America shows up in a fantasy world and they bring freedom and democracy. And it was legitimately good. And people just kept requesting it, requesting it, requesting this sort of stuff. And I'm like, okay, I'll just give in to the, to the people. So I kept doing that. And then I started getting into some drama stuff. And then I started kind of looking into the fan fiction communities that I'm reviewing from. And one person for whom, for legal reasons I'm not able to say at the moment, has a dating group for underage people to mm. meet with older people. Oh, that's effed up. Okay. And the messed up part, when I was messaging this person, calling them out, even called them out in my videos, they were saying, oh, we, we do Instagram, like Snapchat calls so we can actually – and I'm like, have you never heard of a voice changer program? Like seriously, oh, yeah. there are – Three voice changer programs out there in the wild. Absolutely. That they could use. And I'm just like, you have no idea what you're doing. If you don't and, meet somebody like in person, face to face, mm -hmm. you do not know. Okay. Mm -hmm. like, you really don't know. Like, I'm happy the airsoft community is all about, oh, this milsim's bad, or oh, this gun is bad, or oh, this person's bad. Like, <laughs> it's a pretty brother, innocent bad, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, my brother in Christ, I will take that drama over just trying to get the FBI to look at this, be like, hey, 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 this, yeah. this, this, right here. But but getting back to trying to be more fun and why I love Airsoft, because again, Airsoft podcast. <laughs> we well, what did, so you said you got into fan fiction. Was this something that, um, like you did before? Like what, is, what, what led uh, you before, into all that? So before I was monetized and to kind of say, hey, you know, I can stay monetized because they were kind of going after the airsoft content, you know, YouTube was back then. And it wasn't until March of 2022 or 23, I believe, they did a huge purge of gun channels, basically, yeah. and small channels. And the big thing was, oh, we saw multiple content, basically same copy and paste content. Oh, you were uploading TikToks like everyone else was doing on fucking YouTube. And here's the thing. Their own terms of service. When it comes to copyright material or other user material, they are to copyright claim you or copyright strike you. Yeah. They did not do any of that. They instead just full on demonetized hundreds of oh, yeah. thousands of channels in March of year 22 or 23. Mm -hmm. I was among them. And so I said, screw it. Because at that point in time, the fan fiction reviews were actually gaining traction and yeah. were legitimately i love doing them because it was something outside of airsoft i could do that sort of stuff i could be like hey 
I love doing this legitimately, and it's honestly entertaining, and I get to do media outside of fan fiction because there is a manga that I'm working on right now, a manga review for this manga, where this dude, Average Joe Schmo, and you would like this. All airsofters would like this in the West. It is an airsoft isekai manga. Isekai, for those who don't know, is basically someone from Earth gets transported into insert blank here type world. This dude basically gets told by a goddess, hey, I'm going to allow you to have your airsoft guns be real guns in unlimited ammo cheat. Whoa. And this dude's collection, first couple chapters. Oh, he's got a Glock. Okay. Oh, he's got a Colt M4. Okay. He's got a Spaz 12. <laughs> uh, okay. It's getting juicy. <laughs> he's got a Barrett 50 Cal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What kind of job do you have again? Mm -hmm. And then the most expensive one out of his collection is the EMG M2 AEG 50 cal. He just pulls this out. And I'm just like, dude, that is a thirty-five, that is a thirty-three hundred dollar gun. How much is that in yen? Five hundred thousand? Whoa. What kind of job do you have? <laughs> And the second most expensive out of his collection is an RPG. Oh my gosh. And I'm just like, I love this manga. I want to know what your job is. Cause salary man does not cut it. There's salary man. And then there's it guy. Who's making the big bucks. <laughs> what are you making? What are you making? Come on, come on, tell, me your secrets. tell me your secrets. That way you can have an EMG $3,300 and 250 <laughs> Like. <laughs> <laughs> like dead serious, dead serious. This manga is really. I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you a link to it at, after this, just so you can give it a read. And if you want to dive into the media reviews, my guy. Yeah, I'm dead serious. I'm, I'm looking at your channel now while you're talking. Like this is okay. But yeah, a lot of fan fictions are actually kind of do present some cool ideas. Um, yeah. uh, and, and so much other stuff. And ironically enough, I've actually been contacted by fan fiction authors saying, hey, how would a person handle this firearm or what's a good firearm design to base like a sci-fi gun off of? And I'm usually just sitting here like, well, the AR-15 has been historically used. The Thompson submachine gun has been historically used uh, by James Cameron for the iconic pulse rifle, uh, MG-42 for the smart gun, uh, the VP-70. For the sidearm of the United States Colonial Marine Corps. <laughs> and again, I'm I they literally come to me because they know, oh, I've got a YouTube channel, I review fan fictions. Yeah. And I have reviewed some crazy ones. Legitimately, I've reviewed some crazy ones. And one of the craziest ones that should not work. Okay, second craziest one that should not work. There's an author who I review who all who I'm in contact with, a, a Romanian who is full on into the Halo lore is legitimately a really good author. And he is full on just, he's able to make something work. The craziest one he made work recently is this clusterfuck of a four-way crossover between Mass Effect, Battlestar Galactica, the reboot from like back in the early aughts. Right. Halo and Star Wars. Wow. The big MacGuffin? A artifact known as the Star Road connects the dimensions, these galaxies together into the Mass Effect galaxy. And I'm just sitting here reading this like, this should not work. Yet you are making it work. <laughs> what Romanian vodka are you drinking that you're making this work? <laughs> but <laughs> That's great. Oh my but, gosh. Okay. And I, and I will have, but of course I've got three other. Uh, so I've these ideas other... are definitely thought of at oh. two in the morning uh, <laughs> after some, a mass amount of caffeine and video games or some Something. other substance. <laughs> Johnny is one of those crazy dudes. He really is. Now I, I will say this. The big thing is I do, because I'm not monetized anymore. I do have a sponsor thing. And I do actually have it play at the beginning of the videos uh, recently. So if you go to any of my reviews or something like that, you'll see a card that kind of plays saying, hey, uh, here is my tier list. One dude, one dude did the whole book tier, tier which is hmm. over $100. Okay. Three stories. Already did the one. 
uh, which was kind of interesting, not going to lie. Yeah. I'm working on a second one, which is a Halo Mass Effect fan fiction crossover, which, again, I'm working on it. To, to, to anyone who may know me, who may be watching this, I'm working on it. <laughs> but the third one, the third one I had to do a crossover with another author who, again, does this insane one, which is called Mass Effect Arcs. You guys are willing to work. If you guys are willing to look at it, you're welcome to. It's on Wattpad. It's actually kind of fun, kind of insane. I've done reviews on it already, so you can go check it out. It has Space Vietnam. Just one. <laughs> oh my God. So basically, this one, third one, was so insane, so out there, so crazy. I had to pull this guy in because, dear God Almighty, when I tell you the title of this, you'll understand. It's called. Forging a harem. <laughs> and it is literally about a dude who is so obsessed with Robussy that he is on a quest to conquer Robussy. <laughs> and I'm just reading this and I'm just sitting here looking at this like, what am I looking at? Why has this person asked me to review this? I should stop. I should quit. I should say, screw you and keep the money. But no, 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 the jokes, the jokes, the jokes that can be made from this is too much. <laughs> and then that small voice in my head is like, you should really stop doing this. Louder voice in my head's going like, he paid you over $120, do it. <laughs> so I want to give a background before we continue too. You and I met through... Sergeant Major Green, who's Tim Harrow. I've had him on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it was wild, okay, when I had him on the podcast. And the thing was, the, the episode I did with him, I did not expect any of that, of his character that he was playing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, okay? <laughs> and as you're talking, and, and as uh, the videos I've seen on your channel, um, you guys make a great combination, like for content, him. for real. Yeah, yeah. I would love to work with him. I legitimately would. But with me, I am, I, I'm not a method actor. Before anyone says anything, no, I've never gone to acting schools. I've never done anything. I did theater once in okay. high school, but that was like way, way long, 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 long time ago. And I hated school. I hate to this day still. Uh, <laughs> then again. Name anyone who doesn't hate their high school years. Right. Anyone. But <laughs> I hate it. anyway, I, I am someone who actually works better with people in person or over like a video call or a discord call or something like that. I, I'm better working off of someone than gotcha. just, oh, hey, here's a script. I am literally all my reviews. Here's a little secret for people who don't know. Everyone assumes that I will do multiple takes for my reviews, for my videos. One take. One take. That's it. One perfect take for all my reviews. Because as soon as that camera's on, as soon as I know it's rolling, I am just go. Yeah. Because my autistic mind retains all the information from what I'm researching on. Like, if, if it's really bad, I remember all the bad stuff. I, I legitimately do. If you go look at my Superman review, which is the last Kryptonians or last survivors of Krypton, what have you, I was so pissed at it because the dude made this fan fiction where basically two Kryptonians survive from Krypton. I'm like, okay, which one? We talking the Timbers from the glory of the animated series of Superman, Batman, Static Shock, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited? No. Zach, goddamn Schneider. <laughs> the Man of Steel. <laughs> and it had zero Superman. It had zero Batman. It had zero anything to do with DC. This, And that's what pissed me off about it, because you have this whole thing, all of DC, literally, you can use... And you decide, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, just like, just like with Microsoft, just like with Sony, just like with all these other people, you said, screw it, wanted to do something your own, that's fine, but leave DC out of this, we already have enough damage as is that we're trying to fix. <laughs> I'm looking for that video, dude, I would love to see that right now, for real. 
Okay, uh, let me actually go to my channel, and I will happily send you a link over Facebook if you want. Um, uh, let's see. It should be under my media reviews. Oh, you uh, have a oh. playlist. Oh, I've got playlists for damn near everything. Dude, you have. I, just, I mean, I'm I'm blown away that you know when I first went on your channel the other day, after we set this up, mm -hmm. I was like, bro, uh, okay. All American AA Airsoft Media is all American, right? Mm -hmm. I, all American I love, Airsoft. <laughs> yep, I love my I country. Love and um, you have almost forty five hundred subscribers, over three thousand videos. And then when I went to sort them by oldest, I was like, "This guy's been doing videos since like for ten years." I mean, I mean, that's impressive, dude, for real. There's my media reviews. And my first media review was not America and Another World. No, it was Metal Family. Good Lord. That was actually a very, very lovely show. I, I need to get back to that one, actually. You have Jesus. got a shit ton of playlists. This is amazing. Uh, I've, I've got it, thankfully. Uh, let me see. And, and, and a lot of the thumbnails <clears throat> for a lot of the videos you'll see. A lot of times I'll just take stuff I find on like Google images or something like that and just be like, oh, mm -hmm. that's cool. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the other stuff, though, I will actually contact my buddy Merck, who is the author of <laughs> a ton of cool stuff. I actually do work with him on some on some stuff um, on, on some of his projects and he'll work with me on some of my projects and what have you. Uh, but a lot of them is just kind of. It's kind of depending on how one looks at it, and it's kind of yeah. <laughs> you've got to listen, bro. You got so uh, anyone watch or listen. You've got a playlist called America Month. <laughs> I love it. That was a themed month. That oh my god, that one was just so insane. Okay, I've got it. I'm sending it to you now. Um, over the Facebook, uh, I don't know if there's a chat option for zoom so i'm just gonna send it over this that's fine uh over facebook but yeah no that's that was all merc's handiwork that thumbnail <laughs> all right we're gonna share the screen here so people that are watching can see this fair warning the uh anger you are about to see is legitimate it is not for show it is legitimate anger. <laughs> yeah you're not being theatrical you're just you're being you Yes. Oh my God, this intro. <laughs> so, so this was last year's intro. Yeah. Um, and I went with the Gordon Freeman Freeman's Mind stuff because I love Freeman's Mind, and I was like, you know, what, let's do that. Cowboy and... Bebop. That's a good one. Yep. Yep. I've got. I. <laughs> oh my God! Looking back at this, I realize how far I've come in terms of intro design. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the mustache oh lord <laughs> <laughs> i love it dude oh my god this is actually kind of embarrassing what looking back at my old stuff <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and that was a ring i actually had um uh, i actually went to a witch shop uh the ring you saw there yeah um and that was something i got uh at a witchy shop because they were like oh this will help with creativity and stress and anxiety i was kind of into that mystical stuff yeah, I was just like, yeah, no, I'll put it on. And I actually legitimately felt kind of refreshed, kind of creative. And that's what kind of inspired the review, ironically. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's awesome. Like I said, this is legitimately, I, I, I honest to God, get really pissed in this review because of so many fucking things that this guy did. <laughs> hey, I'm going to skip forward because I, I mean, you get this is a 25 minute video. You the, your videos are not like just one or two minutes here and there. Like, no. They are, some, they are dude, mostly informative. That's a lot of content. They are informative. They're entertaining. I'm hoping to break into gaming content. Oh, this is one of my favorite gags to use. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I tied that perfectly. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have a lot of cutaway gags I love using in my reviews. Uh, but yeah. Oh, good Lord. Oh, there we go. Oh, look, yep. look. We didn't see fucking Atlantis. We didn't see fucking Themyscira. We didn't fucking see... Batman! We didn't see any of the DC big names! You have to understand, I love DC, <laughs> and I grew up with DC. <laughs> Dude, I love this. Oh my gosh. Here's the thing. I So the reason, and a lot of people are like, 
why were you so angry in that review? And I said it in the review. I grew up with DC and Superman. I was bullied a lot in junior high and high school for being autistic. Okay. And every time I came home and I watched Superman, I watched him get beaten down. I watched this guy get his ass kicked, but he always got back up. And that in a way was kind of just me. It may have been me projecting because I myself got my ass kicked a lot growing up, but Mm -hmm. Superman is kind of my hero as well as Batman being my favorite. I still hate what they did to Kevin Conroy, that amazing human being. Hate what they did to him in the Justice League, that video game that sh- just, just. <laughs> Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. It's no mistake. Because <laughs> believe me, I legitimately, especially my old gun reviews, because I have reviewed some bad guns every October, and Tony loves doing this. And I know he's fucking watching. I know you're watching, Tony, you son of a bitch. <laughs> People love sending me bad guns. He loves sending me bad guns. And I have done horrible gun months, even fought a demonically possessed Glock. (laughs) And let me tell you now, I, every October, I will review a bad, bad, batch, bad batch guns, be they Springers, be they EEGs, be they gas guns. I will review them because no one else will. And I will tell the truth (laughs) because people who just look at these guns, these cheap guns, uh, talking for real for a second, people who look at these cheap guns, they will just look at them and be like, oh, there's no content there. It's just a cheap springer. Me, on the other hand, this jackass, I see a joke waiting to happen. I see me being yelling at this thing and then taking a 12-gauge to it. That is not a spoiler <laughs> for what's to come in the future, but I can assure you something's going to happen that may involve me shooting one of these cheap guns with a 12-gauge shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> but the big thing though is that a lot of these cheap guns actually have really weird histories to them like when i reviewed the ak-12 and you probably have seen this on amazon the 70 dollar 80 dollar ak-12 there's a story behind it so buckle up buttercups because this is about to get <laughs> insane oh that's funny story time when the ak-12 was first developed and it was announced there wasn't one in airsoft so, JG, being the absolute money-grubbing SOBs they are, looked at it and was like, we can make a that for cheap, yeah! <laughs> they do. And they realized, oh shit, we could be sued! <laughs> so they reach out to UK Arms for distribution. UK Arms is like, hey, we'll happily distribute the gun. They realized what JG did and was like, oh shit, they're gonna try and get us sued! They reach out to Well for promotion. Well was like, we'll gladly do that. Then Well figured out what was going on. And they were like, oh, he shit these bastards. (laughs) And so to complete the circle of cheap gun manufacturers, they reach out to Double Eagle to make the fucking box art. Oh, my God. And they did. And they made bank. Because technically speaking, they're just making the box art. They ain't doing shit. And the messed up thing is that Russia never once sued them. Never once. Of course, JG stopped producing them. Well, okay, I say they stopped producing them. What it really means is they handed it over to UK Arms. UK Arms is still producing the thing. And they and and Wells over here doing their thing. Double Eagles doing their thing. These trifecta of cheap gun companies are literally still producing this AK and still shipping it out. Holy shit! Yeah, and it goes alongside the other two cheap AKs you can find on Amazon for sixteen and seventy bucks. And the side folding AK, I reviewed that one. All these AKs that you see online, they have V three internals. Hmm. I am not even joking, and I have opened these things up. They have V3 internals. You can fully upgrade these things. And the one cheap well AK-74 side folder has a quick change spring system. What? No joke, my guy. So that's why I love doing what I do. I literally tell people, hey, check these guns out. They've got some really cool things, really interesting history. 
and you can do evil to them. <laughs> and no joke, I know people who have done evil to them. Evil including HPA, DSG, just stupid, crazy, whatever the hell have you done to this little plastic gun? So and what makes them cheap? They're like, they're so the body is like just flimsy as cheap hell. Cheap plastic. No, it's not. Yeah. It's not even that. It's, it is made out of cheap plastic. Yes. Yeah. But it's not flimsy as hell. Believe me. I know cheap. And everyone who's like, oh, this, this one gun that's like $80 is such a cheap gun. It's an L peg. I will look <laughs> at it and be like, okay, motherfucker, listen, right the fuck here, right the fuck now. Number one, that takes a full-size AEG gearbox. Number two, that takes a full-size fucking AEG magazine. Number three, that has a Tamiya plug, meaning that can be switched over to Dean's. And number four, the fact that it has all those three factors in place means that that thing can be actually swapped over and turned into a sleeper build, you absolute ignorant son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, that's funny, dude. I'm a southerner from Tennessee that speaks honesty. What can I say? But, but in all seriousness, though, a lot of these cheap guns, legitimately, there are some that are actually good. The AKs I've reviewed, the the UK, the, the trifecta AKs that I love to call them as, they are actually can be upgraded. But then I came across one from all of all places, Cabela's. What? Cabela's are bringing in through Cybergun, mind you, because Cybergun jumped onto the bandwagon, are bringing in South Korean AKs. Okay. So let me so let me tell you about <laughs> South Korea. So I had to do a little talking, had to do a little research. This is crazy. Me. Okay, I was gonna say you you definitely got some information on this stuff. That's good. So South Korean airsoft is a little bit weird. Uh, so you have to be a certain age to buy an airsoft gun, but you can't buy an AEG or a gas blowback. You gotta buy a Springer. So to maximize profits, companies start producing two variants of their guns: Spring variant and AEG variant. Go ahead and ask me what makes them different. <laughs> hmm. It's South Korea. It's right there next to Japan. South yeah. Korean airsoft. I spent a couple months in South Korea. Okay. So here's where it gets fun. The only thing that makes them different is that the Springer can be converted into an AEG because it literally has a spring gearbox. You heard correct. Spring gearbox, meaning that it is a plastic gearbox that literally just is spring action. So there's a gearbox in it. It's a plastic, it's a spring gearbox, yeah. as we've called it. And all you got to do is pull that out, put in an actual gearbox, boom, ready to go. What? And you want to know how much this AK is right the hell now on Evike? Mm. $60. What? And it takes AEG magazines and the little 20 round like speed loader type magazine fits into AEG AKs. Whoa. So you can literally take this South Korean AK and either HPA it, leave it as a Springer because that thing has a hundred plus feet range with its fixed hop up. Not joking on that. 300 that FPS. That is crazy. Or change it into an AEG. Right. And there are websites that sell these South Korean guns. And you can get them either as spring variants that are like sub $100 that take full-size AEG magazines. It could take full-size AEG gearboxes, or you can spend over $100 and get the AEG variants. Like, I mean, that's cheap, dude. Like, for real. Like, for somebody to get a... Because we did on our channel, we used to do... Uh, I was telling these guys, okay, do a beginners, you know, one of those popular what a lot of airsofters do on their channels right mm -hmm. um all right this is what you need to just you know bare bones minimum to get mm -hmm. out on the field like okay for somebody that doesn't have a big budget okay this is what mm -hmm. you do and uh yeah we did the same type of thing right with these guys were going through but uh mm -hmm. yeah that's insane dude okay and you know what you were talking about earlier um that i have a playlist on our uh youtube channel that uh i turned off uh, unlisted uh, mm -hmm. a while ago mm -hmm. and um let me i want to show you real quick because uh it's pretty funny as to uh what we're talking about 
we started our channel when we started doing reviews. So this is Christian, uh, my oldest son, who was on the mm -hmm. channel. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? <laughs> 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 I don't know if I have sound on this or just music. So I found the AK on Amazon, on Evo. I mean. <laughs> so and, we were uh, shooting these with uh, a 12 gauge, like you were talking about. Yeah. Look at that thing. Oh my God. That is insane. So I love this. The, is I what love we, the destruction. This is what we started doing. Okay. To these guns. Mm -hmm. And then um, the, to the cheap ones that we would get in the uh, mystery boxes. Mm -hmm. Well, then somebody commented on, I think this video and said, uh, instead of blowing them up, why don't you do a giveaway with them? And that was actually how we started our giveaways. And we had done a ton of giveaways on our channel. All right, what do you got here? Let's see. That's the AK. This is crazy. All right, for anyone listening, instead of watching, I'm pulling up the screen right now. This is evic.com. This is uh, Soft Air Kalashnikov licensed AKS 74U spring powered airsoft rifle. $55. Here's the thing that's a Hollow. South Korean AK that they've just rebranded, redone, crazy. and it has a 14 millimeter negative threaded barrel under that flash hider. Yeah. And like I said, it can take AEG magazines. It can be and that flash. To that orange tip is god awful. Please take that off when you get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously though, like, Again, I did the review on it. If you yeah. guys want to, you can go find my review on my channel. You can find my review of the South Korean AK. We'll uh, we'll list the link for sure in the uh, description too, so people can look oh, yeah. at it. Cause, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, again, for the if you're budget minded and you want an AK, but you don't want to spend over certain amounts, I and again, this is what I do. I find people deals on a budget, and this is legitimately one of those deals because there are no websites outside of actual Korean websites that mm -hmm. you have to go to that have like these poor translations, yeah. basically like poor English translations where you can buy these South Korean products. Mm -hmm. And I wish, I wish more companies would bring in more South Korean products because do you have any idea how much of a killing people would make if there was like, Oh, you can buy this Springer for like $55. Again, it's not because we have one on screen, but you know, I'm just throwing that as an example. And it's like, <laughs> And uh, yeah, if you have a V3 gearbox, you could just throw it in there. I mean, this is crazy, bro. South Koreans, man. We think Tokyo Marui in Japan is over here making strides. Nah, nah, son. You got to invest in South Korean <laughs> airsoft, okay? They over here making springers that can be converted into either HPA or AEG. They know what it is. They know what's going on. I'm for real, bro. So did you did you convert one of these and try it out? I did try to, but the gearbox I had was not it, it wouldn't work because the way the wiring was set up. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it did fit. It did yeah. shoot. It did fire. It worked. And that's what blew my mind because it's like, oh my god, that's awesome. Yeah. And so with the AG, so if you swap it out, what do you have to do? Like Dremel some of the inside no, to get the nothing. wiring to fit? Okay. Well, 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 if you're trying to get the wiring to fit, if it's like yeah. a rear wired gearbox, then yeah. Right. But in terms of like if it's meant set up for like the 74s. Yeah. Like the folding like on stocks top, or the right? underfolders. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like on top, just drop it in. Hmm. Just drop it in, lock it down, done. That's awesome. Yeah, and like I said, if you don't want to convert into a AEG, the spring variant, the spring gearbox, you are getting well over 300 FPS out of that sucker. You can use AEG magazines out of that sucker. You can get over 100 feet out of the sucker. <laughs> I'm not joking on that. Like, So pretend I – and I don't know, so I'm asking. Um, but pretend I don't know what a spring – so I, I'm looking at this one here, and I don't know mm – -hmm. like. It's a springer. Mm -hmm. So do you have to pull the charging yeah, handle? Yep. To, okay. Yeah, you got to pull the charging handle, but it's actually a semi full travel charging handle. Yeah. Well, semi, I guess I could say, because you know how a lot of the times AEGs, they'll do the whole thing where it's like, oh, it only travels halfway back. 
to right. just reveal right. the hop. Yeah, no, this thing goes all the way back to that curve, halfway to that curve where you get okay. like that much or that much of like clearance between that curve and the bolt. Right. And this is not a light spring. This is a pretty decent sized spring for the U.S. markets, mm. because if it was South Korean standards, you'd be getting like sub 300 FPS, basically. Yeah. But this is U.S. standard, and this is a full-size AEG spring. This ain't this, you know, wimpy spring hmm. or spring. No, this is a full-on AEG spring shoved into a plastic gearbox, and it has a return home spring. So when you release that bolt or that charging it handle, slaps. it's slapping hard. And, it, and if it wasn't plastic, if it was metal, you'd be slapping metal on metal. You'd be getting that iconic crack. Yeah. Again, it is mind-boggling because, again, That's this is wild. South Korea. Yeah, We don't hear anything about South Korea. I'm the only person on YouTube, English-speaking YouTube, mind you, who has covered <laughs> a South Korean gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I said, it's, it's insane. I, I didn't even know. I didn't know yeah. they had uh, South Korea. I didn't even know South Korea made – yeah, they guns. do. Yeah. They they actually do. There's there's of course there's the cheap ones, but even the cheap ones are kind of insane because they make you know the pump action magazine fed shotguns? Yeah. South Korea saw that and was like, we want that to use AR magazine. <laughs> For real? For real. <laughs> and then they looked at the Springer AKs. It's like, that okay. We want the charging handle to fold out like this and then come back. They have a little lever in the AK charging handles where you just flip it out a little bit. And like those old BB guns, you just do it like that. Yeah, and that rat yeah, it ratchets the system to rack the bolt back, send it home, and you just fire. Or not pump, but well, we called them pump. Like I, yeah, the, old, the BB the guns I had a yeah, the pneumatic yeah, one. The old mags, but it's yeah. the uh it's more it 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 functions more like a lever action, the yeah. way you're pumping it. Yeah. Yeah. And they're AE, they're cheapo AEGs. You can go on eBay and you can find the K1 and K2 AEGs. But here's the thing. They are the cheap versions. By mm -hmm. cheap versions, I mean they still take standard AEG M4 magazines. They still have hop-up units. The only difference is it runs off of AA batteries. I've heard of this. Someone else – this is a while ago when I first started these podcasts – Somebody told me they used to have, I think it was Magaz, actually. Mm -hmm. Magaz in um, is his, his mm -hmm. YouTube channel. Uh, he's in the UK. He told me about, he, he's been playing Airsoft for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And he talked about having one that was a, uh, that took AA batteries. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, the only AA battery Airsoft guns we have in the US are the old MP9 AEPs. Mm. And Again, I hate that we have those because look at how much success we have with the MP7. Imagine if we had that much success with the MP9 as a legitimate, like, AEG, basically. Well, AEP, but you get what I'm saying. Right. Or like the Tokyo Marui copy, uh, well, MP7, where it has, like, the battery you just slide in or snap on or the, mm -hmm. M or the Mac 11, Mac 10 AEP, for God's sakes, people. <laughs> like, do you have any idea how rabid the Airsoft fan base is? Like, I'm, I'm talking to the companies that may or may not be watching this. Do you have any idea how rabid the fan base is for the MP9? Mm -hmm. Like, they will chomp. They will pay any price. Well, not any price, but they will pay you. Like, they, they, will, <laughs> they will pay you. <laughs> I mean... It is what it is, though. But uh, uh, some a subject I kind of wanted to bring up is legitimately the airsoft industry as a whole. Yeah. If you've noticed as of late, real steel trends actually do reflect the airsoft sphere. Hmm. Because if you think about it, long, long ago, we had the surge of literally the ARPCCs, the pistol caliber carbine phrase phase <laughs> craze <laughs> and everyone was just chomping at the bit form and then that went away and then there was like oh demolition ranch rifles coming out and then everyone had to have a demolition ranch rifle 
Then there's, there was the kinetics, and then everyone had to have a kinetics, where on the last shot, magazine falls. Yay! <laughs> and then insert anything Tokyo Marui. Just anything Tokyo Marui. I mean, right. what's the current one right now? The Sega 12? It, is it? Okay. I think. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I stopped paying attention with Tokyo Marui trends, because I'm like... They will just I'm I'm only in it for like the Resident Evil stuff. Unless it's something new from Resident Evil, I don't care what Toki Marui does. They could make an honest to God combat exoskeleton. And I would not <laughs> care. Like I don't. I just want more Resident Evil. <laughs> more, more plug-in stuff, please, Tokyo Marui. Mm-hmm. But now, thanks to SRU, and this is a big one, because I you have to have the pulse on for these phrases. SRU, when they came out and they said, hey, we're making real steel now alongside our airsoft products, everyone was skeptical. Everyone was, I myself included, because don't get me wrong, I have the M4 SRU bullpup kit. It's in pieces right now because I don't have an M4 to kind of throw it in there, but, (laughs) you know, one day, one day. But the big thing is that when SRU went to real steel and they actually started making a legitimate real steel bullpup kit for AR-15s and Brownells AR-180s. Everyone lost their collective shit. It was like the second coming of Clint, not not Clint Eastwood, the second coming (laughs) of Jesus, uh, of gun Jesus, basically. It was like someone was able to revive all the greats. They were able to revive Lenny. They were able to revive... Prince, they were able to get Jimi Hendrix back to life. They were able to get all these people back. And that's what it was, basically. Everyone lost their collector ship because they were able to make a AR-15 bullpup kit work. Yeah, that's wild. And it's because of 3D printing. And yes, I went through the whole spiel basically to get to 3D printing is going to change the airsoft field. Everyone will say, no, it won't. No, it won't. Okay, I'm looking at SRU. I'm looking at every single Nerf ever. I'm looking at every single gel ball ever. I'm looking at this dude right here who's literally 3D printing firearms and doing crazy ass shit with it. (laughs) Yes, I'm looking at you guys in the 3D printed world. You are amazing. I wish you would make it for airsoft as well. I would love the Orca. For those who don't know what the Orca rifle is, the Orca is literally a wh- a Orca whale inspired AR-15 body, and it is beautiful. Hmm. Not as good as the FN-2000, but it's got the curves. Like I'm not joking. If you look, if you just 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 pause this real quick, guys. Go to Google, type in Orca AR-15, and it should come up. We're gonna find it right now. <laughs> <laughs> We are going to find it. Yep. <clears throat> Let's see. There, there it is. This beautiful, beautiful body. Oh, I want one for Airsoft so bad. Like it bends just this beautiful blend of retro, futuristic, modern, like. Okay. So there's a bunch of stuff on here, d- different variants. What? Uh... Yeah, right there. What you're looking at, like that, that is the Orca AR-15 body that you're looking at. And it is just, I want one so bad for Airsoft. That is cool looking. Like, like I said, it blends the retro with the futuristic. It's organically flowing. Don't get me wrong, the black and red is good too, but I'm I'm kind of down for just, you know, the black (laughs) and gray or the black and white, you know, but, but just, God, I want one so bad. I mean, you know, the thing is, though, it's like it's not that much of a change. Like it's it's very subtle. It is. I I mean, it's noticeable, but it's it it's not like a huge, crazy looking change. Like it looks awesome, but it's like uh, yeah, yeah. it looks so futuristic. Mm, Like I said, I I like to call it retro modern because of the Mm -hmm. handguard. Because you can see the A one inspiration in the handguard, and right. And, and that's what I love about it. Like, if you just look at 3D print stuff, anything, and this goes to everyone out there, if you have a 3D printer and you can make a new design gun, you can literally rule the fucking airsoft world. Because if you can make it where it is affordable 
where it is able to be upgraded, where it is mm-hmm. modular, you can literally make so much money. Like SRU was able to make so much money off of their 3D prints and then move on to injection moldeds because they uh, just start out with bullpup stuff. Right. And then it just evolved to, hey, now we have armor. Now we have all of this. And it's just insane how far it will go into the future. It's going to get to the point where we're going to be able to 3D print out entire guns. Absolutely. I'm talking gearbox. I am talking body, just attachments, all of it, just from a 3D printer. And all you need, bolts, screws, the the, the, the motor, the wiring, the gears, piston, piston head, the spring. That's it. Has anyone tried doing oh, a full gearbox? Like the gears, the... Yeah, I guess they the, have. what would you what you can't print springs? No, well, you can, but it'd be like the the small stuff, you know, it'd be like yeah. the the anti reversal spring is really tiny. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like I said, basically the big thing with three D printing is that that's going to be the future of airsoft, and already companies are doing that. If you look at what companies are doing, especially with G and G now. It's yeah. clear what G&G did with that new bullpup shotgun. They just saw the Flak 12 and it was like, that's made out of metal. We can make it somewhat cheap and then overprice the hell out of it. <laughs> and they did. And they made an injection molded bullpup system because it's all polymer. Yeah. Well, minus, you know, what needs to be metal. But right. again, an all polymer gun. If you look at just, again, Glock, much as I hate hate them thanks to the community ruining it for me that's a good example <laughs> or even smith and weston like frames or a uh, hell just just for because it's there all these originally done 3d print guns like the plastikoff which is a fully 3d print ak-47 that brian herrera has covered um uh, or even the full-on ar-15 stuff like the orca we showed and we mm-hmm. saw 3d printing will make wicked stuff and i i i'm gonna send it to you from facebook just because this is one of my favorite guns that i legitimately would Let's love to let me just get a picture uh, if i can find it actually um let me see if i can find it oh i don't even have to i found one of the 3d printed stuff so this was a dragon off that a guy did i don't remember what group it is but this was a dragon off that a dude 3D printed and made a full-on fucking magazine for. Let's check this out. All 3D print. That's wild, bro. Wait till you check the other one he did. Woo, buddy, that looks badass now. Again, all 3D printed. And he made that magazine. And and here's what's cool. That is not hard to do. Like, you can 3D print out magazines. This magazine is... Uh, what's that? Gu- we did a review on it. Um, That'd be the Bison. Bison, thank you. Yeah, the Bison. Again, Dude. one of my dream guns. Like, one of my dream SMGs. Just because it's a helical magazine. And I those are not hard to do. I wish we still had that one, man. It was pretty cool. Honestly. And that's not hard to do. Like, again, it's basically... All you have to do is just twist... Or, yeah. again, just 3D print out the shell itself, clamshell that sucker together, have a hold where the spring and the follower can just feed in, constantly spinning and turning. And I would not be surprised if that was a thousand-something round mid-cap he designed. Yeah. Like, could you imagine someone show up to the field with that 3D printed? I mean, that's cool as hell. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I mean by 3D printing is the future of airsoft. It really is. Because they're mm-hmm. already toy guns. They're already pretty simple mm-hmm. type of setup, right? Especially the cosmetic stuff. I mean, we had uh, – we got a gun that was like the Halo style mm-hmm. or s- something that was – God, what was it? Uh, we did a review on it. I can't remember. Um Anyway, it had lasers built into like a little laser light and LEDs built into it. It It's pretty cool. 
But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, there's all kind of options with 3D printing for these guns. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what's actually kind of cool about it. And, and I wish people would actually look into it more because as much as comp as much as people want to say, oh, 3D printing guns is illegal. It's like, OK, we're just 3D printing out toys. We yeah. are making something cool here. And again, to anyone watching, if you can make stuff like this and you can sell it legitimately on the open market, you will make bank. Yes, you will be bastardizing a dragon off if you go <laughs> with the examples I've presented here. But if you can 3D print out a whole gun, original design, yeah, and it just be like, oh, all you need is a V2 gearbox and a, a V2 hop-up system, or better yet, V2 gearbox with a like V3 hop-up system or, or whatever hop-up system you decide to go with, or even just screw it. it. There's a literal screw right here that I can twist that presses mm -hmm. down a thing on the hop-up nub. Like, again, if you can do that and you can make it affordable and modular, like based off the AR-15 platform, who cares? Just do what this guy did and have – Fun for God's does, sakes. Do you know? Does this guy have like a channel or something? Did I he don't show know. the I, process? I, I wish I knew because these were shared with me by a friend who didn't give okay. me a source because he was saying, Oh, yeah, this was shared by another guy. To anyone watching who knows who did this, to the guy, you are a mad lad. And I would love to have <laughs> a dragon off that is working off of a helical magazine. Let's do a search Airsoft 3D printed. Oh, you're about to go down a rabbit hole. I went down. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to have a little come bit on, of Come on, come on. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> check it out. Let's just look at images. How about that? Let's see what, what, what crazy stuff people have, have uh, come up with. See, this, mm -hmm. this one he's holding, that looks similar to what we uh, did a review on. That would be the SRU Bullpup uh, <laughs> sniper rifle. But then, of course, you have the AAP-01 stuff, and then you have oh, the Springer stuff, and then you have just all There's a stuff. ton of AAP-01 uh, yeah, add-ons mm -hmm. and And then you have kits. that lovely bullpup right there, which I think that guy's actually selling. I, I'm not 100% I'm not sure. But no, that one I actually looked at, and I would love to have that in Airsoft. I'll be honest. like I would this love to have This looks futuristic, yeah. Yeah, because again, bullpups are obviously, you know, people love bullpups, but why not do regular rifles? I'm just saying, it's whatever, it's whatever, it's whatever. But yeah, like, like I said, it's, it's basically, it's, it's whatever. And then, of course, you got, again, all this crazy stuff. Oh, See, I, like, I love kit. this. This looks badass. And look, that's, <laughs> no, no, a, that's a pistol. Yeah. That is a Glock that he's using uh -huh. for the base gun. Uh -huh. It's not an SRU kit, my bad. Uh, yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like 3d printed stuff is going to be the future of it. And it already is in its own right. Like there is a ton of guys who make these wicked, wicked stuff that you can find on YouTube. And there's a guy I do follow sometimes. Uh, let me see here. Let's see. One of the guys I had on a couple times on here early on is uh, his YouTube channel was van Alex. And mm -hmm. he was big into, he was actually, a lot of his videos, he was trying to make a, uh, an HPA type that he, that, you know, f fully 3D printed. He couldn't get mm -hmm. something right. It, they kept breaking or something like that. He kept losing compression or something. But um, yeah, interesting stuff. Oh, well, yeah. And, and like I said, there's a, there's a lot of cool guys and one of them, which is absolutely insane, actually is making wrist-mounted cannons. He's actually making halincers. He is doing just all sorts of insane oh, stuff. Dude, you should see uh, six millimeter Mandalorian. He made a uh, shoulder mount, a shoulder-mounted uh, weapon that turns. He has servos in it that turns. It's connected to his camera on his on his helmet. And it turns, it moves with his camera. So wherever he's looking up, down, left, right, that's where the gun goes, and it shoots. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon from Skirmish, shout out Skirmish, sponsor. Uh, Brandon actually helped program some of that stuff for him for the event. And um, yeah, that's cool. Let's see what you got here. This channel is the one I was talking about. This dude makes just 
actual functional 3D print stuff, and it is, and he makes it for Airsoft as well, and it's insane. Oh, like, that's cool. I wish I was joking. Like, <laughs> the, 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 the wrist-mounted launcher works. The grenades work. The crossbow works. The cannon works. I don't know how he does it. I, I mean, yeah, he shows how it does it. But it is so insane. So is that... this, the, this is the wrist one. Yeah. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Yeah, this is uh, this is cool, man. Mm-hmm. Dude, what game is this? I don't think it is a game. That's the thing. I think it's legitimately. <laughs> no, do you see the screen? Oh, the screen. That would be. Oh, that's just one of those mobile games. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's Mac. It's probably Mac Arena. Fake, probably fake news. Now you know those mobile games do. They show the most interesting previews, mm -hmm. and then you download the game, and it's freaking shit. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's stupid. Okay, so he's showing how he printed everything or each part. And then putting it together. Mm -hmm. So this is the, uh, for anyone listening, uh, we're watching a video where um, he's, this guy is showing the uh, pieces that he printed, 3D printed for a grenade launcher. Looks like a 40 millimeter. That looks like the shower gun. Whoa. Do you see that? Yeah. Like Dude, I the said. fins come out and it flies. Oh, holy. Yeah. It gets better. It gets better. Oh, I mean, this is amazing. And here's the one I liked. What? I mean, this is pretty freaking cool, man. Oh, like I said. <laughs> he actually, mm, this dude. To those who are watching, seriously, go check this guy out. He makes such good. Cool What's it called? Plays. Flasuti? Flasuti? I I think I don't I don't speak his language. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it to be racist. I literally yeah, yeah. do not pronounce anything. Just. I mean, this is crazy. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know that's what. This is uh yeah. There's a lot of people get into the uh, 3D printed gun stuff. Okay. Yeah, and there are shorts where I wish I knew the name of it because it was one of those things of, oh, that's really cool. And it's just like, I have lost it. <laughs> if I can find it, because this dude actually built this. Uh, and, it, and it works. It's a shell ejecting and it works. I wish I knew where the short was because it was insane. The, dia oh, the guy crazy. actually, yeah, the guy actually built the Linux in Airsoft. Oh, really? I think I have found him. All right, let's check it out. Oh, let me let me make sure. Let me make sure. And no, I did not. <laughs> you suck. I'm trying I'm trying to make sure I've actually got him because again, it's one of those things of I'm trying to make sure I get you good links so you can ha oh, there it is. There it is. Let me send you the link. Just so you can see this amazing ingenuity. Looks like a Barrett. That's the Linux. Whoa. What? Look at that. Mm-hmm. That is all... 3D printed. Is that gas? And, Is that gas? Yeah, blowback? that's gas like, blowback. That's gas blowback. Shit. Oh man, the, we got some smart dudes making some of this stuff, bro. Yeah. And that's not <laughs> even talking about the crazy dudes who do the Luger stuff. It's crazy that it has enough power to, to function. Oh, and it's a shell ejector too. Good Lord. And if you go to his shorts, you will find a lot of the stuff he's created, including a, I'm not even joking, a Luger P08 G43 carbine kit. Whoa. 
Mm -hmm. And he's, I, again, I wish, I wish I was making this stuff up, but this, this is just Vereen. Okay. Yeah. Like again, just, just go to his shorts and just look at this crazy. All right. Let's check out his shorts. Hey, anyone that's just listening to the audio, go watch the video later. Cause this is too much to describe. And this is really cool stuff. Okay. Yeah, like this really is badass stuff. stuff for real. And and if you're an engineer who loves building stuff, I don't know about you, Iraq. I don't I don't know if you have a background engineering or anything or tinkering, but you yourself are going to be scratching your head, just examining these things like enhance, enhance. No, I I'm very uh, heavy on the um, mechanical aptitude, so I I was, but I was always into uh, mechanics, so like fixing mm. stuff that's broke as opposed mm-hmm. to designing and building something that's not there yet. So, but all this stuff fascinates me because that's, how, because I think, you know, aptitude and I understand, have a good understanding of how things work. Mm-hmm. Um, when I see these things, I'm going, Oh my gosh, they got that to work. Like they, like how <laughs> I understand what they had to go through to figure these things out. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of if then statements, uh, yeah, in their the, head, the one, right? The one that blows my mind has to be his M712 just machine gun stuff. Yeah, because look at this. I am just sitting here looking at this like, how'd you make this work? Like, I mean, this stuff is amazing. That is a fast cyclic break too. What? Yeah, yeah. And the fact that he ba- he made it off of the M712 and I'm just sitting here like, oh, j- oh, oh my j- God. J- 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 okay. That's awesome. How? How? Like I don't even know what this thing is. Look at this thing. I I don't read Korean, sadly. <laughs> oh my god, that is so cool! Like, I, I, again, this is why I love looking at this side of the airsoft world because not only do you find really cool and interesting, like guns and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, is it supposed to the fan? Flips out from the gun. It's supposed to keep you cool while you're shooting. I I don't know. That's what makes me laugh. I just. (laughs) It is. It says bolt action rifle summer setup. (laughs) So he's got a little electric fan on this that blows back in your face while you're shooting. Yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. Okay. And and, and one of the cool things, he does show off a really cool. um... Whoa. Look at that thing. Yeah. Looks like you put the pistol in upside down. Yeah. Oh my god. Calibri machine gun. Whoa. <laughs> That's like the old style Gatling guns from the Yep, yep. Little Calibri. Oh, crap, dude. And and the cool thing is he does show off a lot of cool like 3D print stuff like the and I'm not even joking. If you go all the way down, not the 30 round stripper clip, but the one that everyone's been wanting in airsoft for a long time, a actual stripper clip for the WeTech M712. And again, you'd be saying, oh, that shouldn't work. Here's the proof right here, ladies and gentlemen. I am looking at a man who just loaded an M712 WeTech gun Mauser with a 3D print stripper clip. Very cool stuff, man, that people are coming up with. Did you did you see um uh I mean have you gotten into 3D printing at all? I wish I had the money to. That's yeah, I would love to because I have these ideas in my mind. I would love to learn how the system works. I would love to be able to actually kind of create these ideas because there are a lot of cool stuff I would love to 3D print as like kits and stuff. Because yeah. when you look at a lot of the guns set in the quote unquote future. <laughs> oh, future! There are a lot of cool stuff that legitimately could be done. Like, yes, I could point out the obvious. Oh, cyberpunk could be done, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, no. Steampunk. Not... Yeah, steampunk. Uh-huh. I mean, I, another good example. And again, I am, I'm sending it through Facebook because, again, I don't know if, if YouTube has a 
or not YouTube, my God, Zoom has a thing. But there was this one AK uh, design I saw. And I just looked at it and I was like, that legitimately could be pulled off. Mm. I mean, just look I mean, at the, this thing. The only thing that looks AK on this is the magazine shape. The magazine. This looks the badass. Bolt, the gas tube right there, the front sight block, the yeah. like, like again, this, like, could you imagine if I had the ability to and to three print on a kit like this with the M lock rails right there, the integrated, like, angled foregrip right there, where it's it's basically done in a way to where the magazine can be the extended magazine catch right there. The see, like, there are so many guns that I would so love love to do like my <laughs> god because i find these cool concepts online and i'm just looking at these things and then i'm just thinking they could work legitimately they could honest to god work yeah in airsoft uh not not in real steel obviously because so you know, what we'll would be so let me ask you this shoot if somebody had uh, if somebody's into 3D printing, which a lot of people on here and, and watching this and into Airsoft, they are. Either they're into it as far as doing it or they're into it as far as interested in it. But um, I know 6mm Mando, he's he's constantly running his printers. He's making all the, um, the stuff for the Star Wars, you know, so they make their own. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of his guys make their own gun attachments and everything to make it look like the Star Wars blasters and the... Mm -hmm. You know, all the uh, outfits and the, the helmets that he has. And um, the last podcast I did with him, he had, he was printing one in the back. You could see the printer going and he's like, oh, I can't. I said, oh, what you got going on back there? He's like, oh, I can't reveal it yet. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And because uh, it was for his event coming up uh, that was, you know, right after our podcast. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there could, there's, there's a lot of possibilities. So he does the Star Wars based event, Galactic Civil War. Uh, what we need is Gears of War events, Halo events, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know, has anyone delved into what you were talking about earlier? DC comic events for Airsoft. To my, to my knowledge, no. And Fallout, especially post apocalyptic, like I am a. But before I get into that, I want to kind of bring up one more thing that 3D printing will definitely help with. Yeah, go ahead. 3D printing will definitely help bring out a lot of not well-known guns into the right. forefront. Yeah, that's true. Like, this is a South American submachine gun Yeah. that was featured in Call of Duty Cold War. And people automatically assume, oh, it's just like a weird, like, submachine gun. No, this thing legitimately was tested by Brazilian military and police, mm. and they legitimately liked it. But then when problems start happening and it was like, eh, it's not good enough to be used because this thing, again, if people see this and you pull it up on screen, obviously, if you look at this gun, you can see that it wouldn't be that hard to do. Right. And I'm going to tell you why I'm about to go. If you know, Mike Byrne fire, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to go into a Zach hazard gun rant. Uh, <laughs> do it. So, like I said, pull it up on screen so I can explain. Okay. There oh, we go. Nope, nope, not that one. The other one. <laughs> oh, which one? The but right there, the newest one. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, South American submachine gun. Now, here's why I said this thing would be easy. What it's using is basically, uh, at the time, would have been modified, basically like MP40 magazines or Uzi magazines. That was kind of the plan. Now, imagine if this thing was using, say, straight MP5 magazines. Mm -hmm. Now, don't make it front wired. Screw that. That, 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 that. Mm -mm. no, screw that. You see that entire buttstock you got right there? Huge. Compared, to that. The, compared to the whole size of the gun, yeah. Long. Yeah. Make that a V2 gearbox. You throw in a rear wired setup, and you basically have all, all that space right there in that buttstock for stick batteries, the massive mm -hmm. Titan, the level one LiPo batteries. The charging handle is literally right there, so it would be easy to basically do like a half setup to where you basically have the gun like this, and you can literally pull back, boom, halfway just enough to reveal the hop-up right there in the ejection port. And the V2, and with it being a V2, 
Boom! V2 hop up with a MP5 magazine. <laughs> this looks it looks like a, a a gearbox would have a hard time fitting in there right now. You say that. But I have seen gearboxes shoved into the smallest of things and it <laughs> should not work. They should not work. Yet yeah. They somehow work. If anything, go with a V7 like M14 gearbox or the P90 gearbox where it's just like it's it's basically just it's a real straight, long and thin yeah it's basically just long and thin we had so, uh we had one uh, dude that thing was the bane of my existence i hated that thing <laughs> it was a it was an hk it was an h and k um uh sniper rifle i can't remember the model but it was the longest gun that we have ever gotten in a mystery box next to the barrett uh the six millimeter uh barrett and this thing was, it, it broke the first time Johnny used it. Okay. JP on mm -hmm. our channel. So mm -hmm. he brings it over. This was when I, this was when I was still like early in our channel, I was still working on our, on all their guns and stuff. Um, actually this gun is the one that broke me. This is the one that I said, F it. I'm not doing it. Y'all take it somewhere else and get it fixed. Okay. I'm done because mm -hmm. this thing was so bad. It was a V7 gearbox, I think. And oh. I had three fingers on it while I'm trying to put it back together. <laughs> I have three fingers on it. And then I was, Christian was walking by the office here and I go, come here. <laughs> All right, come here and hold this. So he put two <laughs> fingers on it and then I was able to close it and get it set. Oh dude, it was, and I had, I was sweating. I was, I mean, I'm talking drip and sweat. I had worked on it for, I don't know, two, three hours <laughs> trying to get this thing back together and then bing, pop out and bing, pop out. I mean, if I would have filmed this whole thing, I could have had a, a comedy reel of just shit falling apart while I'm putting this. Oh, was, dude. <laughs> anyway, yes. A, a thin little tiny gearbox is it, elongated, stretched out one could fit in there, but oh, a, a V2, Lord. yeah, actually I looking at it. I, nightmares. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll admit, yeah, V2 may be a bit of a stretch, but when you look at it, like, again, have it except an MP5 magazine, and boom, you essentially have a cheap, like, submachine gun because it's all polymer. I mean, I don't see any. Br so the only seam I see, I, I mean, is this all? So the the back of it's this literally, buttstock here. So you is, see the seam right piece? there. Yeah. yeah, that's that buttstock is attached to the upper, which is an entire seam that literally is held so, in by one, two pins, and the buttstock itself is held in by a pin. And then this, whoa, oh, dude! Yeah, this is insane. Brazil, man, or freaking South America, man, like <laughs> over here making crazy, <laughs> crazy submachine guns when they're not on cocaine. <laughs> Maybe when they are. <laughs> That's how they're coming up with these designs. <laughs> like That's I said, it's, it, it, it's pretty insane how a lot of the, the, the crazy stuff is, uh, which as I'm talking to you, of course, uh, I am also looking for, of course, that manga I was telling you about that I'm going to be doing a review on so that yeah, way you can please. show your friends. Uh, I am trying to find it if I can remember. I would, exact I would love answer. to see that. Uh, let's see here. So the big thing, though, and this is the thing when it comes to storytelling, especially because this is me now coming in as someone who has reviewed a good amount of stories, has talked about stories, has reviewed a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Milsim events and just events in general, what really sells it for anyone is a good story. Absolutely. And one of the best ones, I know I'm quoting Kevin Spacey here, but one of the best ones is the greatest trick the devil ever played on man is making man believe the devil never existed in the first place. That's right. That is probably the greatest story one can do. And, and, and the best example, like top tier storytelling for airsoft events is – Swamp Sniper and his Apocalypse stuff or just any of his events. Yep. They have the top, like if he was to take this and write it into a book, he would sell just, he, he would sell also link to the manga <laughs> just sent. Uh, <laughs> but but before you pull this up yeah. uh, and, and you go over analyzing the cover and all Swamp Sniper, if, if you can hear me seriously, Take your storylines and turn them into books. Turn them into comics, for God's sakes. Mm. You 
have something storytelling wise because you start out with the apocalypse one as just oh the apocalypse has happened we're trying to survive to interdimensional beings and gods <laughs> and cults and i'm just like i want to be in this man's head i want this man to write a book mm-hmm. about his rev nation series please god let him write a book about this or even his <laughs> Zombie apocalypse stuff. You don't even need to do anything. It's just zombies. Like, Night of the Living Dead. You don't got to do anything with that. Or or the Zack Snyder running zombies, One Dawn of the Dead, which don't get me wrong, his remake was good. I'll give him that. It was great. His later <laughs> one, though, leads a lot to be desired and just scratching head question mm. mark of just, what the hell am I looking at? Zack? Zack Schneider, what am I looking at? Or, God forbid, the Day of the Dead remake. The first one from 08, not the second one on Netflix, which is still arguably better than the 08 one, which... (laughs) No joke, I've had friends ask me if I'm ever going to review the 08 Day of the Dead. Yeah, I've told them, hell no. Why not? Fuck no. You can't pay me enough to review it. I'm not reviewing that absolute, just stupid anything do it you should have you should have a play another playlist you need you don't have enough playlists on your youtube channel you need to have (laughs) another playlist that is like call it the garbage can or okay the the something like that where you do the review on these things that are absolute trash (laughs) do it (laughs) you would have so much fun I cannot for the life of me do it because I don't want to review a zombie movie where zombie runs up on the ceiling and then there's CGI <laughs> everywhere of zombie deaths and, and heads exploding and eyeballs. Melt. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Dude, I just watched. I didn't watch it purposely, but it had come on uh, uh, YouTube. You know, there was this old, uh, they were playing old videos of uh, 80s music, okay? Mm -hmm. And they were the the actual uh, original um, MTV, like, music videos that uh, originally came out back in the 80s and stuff. So, Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson's Thriller comes out. Now, that song, a lot of people don't know, not only is the song very long anyway, but the Mm -hmm. video... The music video that came out for it, it was kind of one of its kind, or you know, oh, the yeah. first of its kind, because and it, it was like Vincent a mini short film. Price. Yeah, Vincent Price, Vince, dude. Yeah, everyone's the, favorite the graphics, grandpa. Dude, when I walked by the screen, I saw it was right when Michael Jackson is turning into the werewolf. Mm-hmm. It was effing hilarious, bro. Like and I it was, was all practical. It, it was, was. practical effects. The whisk, the whiskers when they were coming out, <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. So, mm-hmm. yeah, if anyone hasn't seen that, go see Michael Jackson's Thriller uh, MTV video. And it's, just so everyone knows, and and I'm just saying this now before you go and click on the link I shared. There are channels out there on YouTube that are preserving. I know it's a different tangent, but but, but no, no, believe go ahead. Me, this is really. There are channels out there that are preserving our childhoods. They are oh, uploading entire programming blocks. One of my favorite is Orbital Bacon. Yes, it's what? called Orbital Bacon. Yeah, yeah. Go to YouTube. Just type in Orbital Bacon. <laughs> we got to find that too. Let's do this one first. Oh God, you you're going. Me. Oh God, here we go. What the hell? Here we go. Get out of here. Oh no! Back up. Back yeah, up, Facebook. A... Why? Do you see this? Yeah, I'm seeing it. I'm yeah. Why it. does go, this keep coming up on me? Go to regular Facebook. Go to regular Messenger. You don't. You don't gotta deal with this crap. I don't understand what it is. I don't want to sync. What the frick is it talking about? Okay, here we go. It does that every once in a while. I don't understand why it keeps doing that. I don't want to freaking sync my shit. And okay. and here's the manga I was telling you about, which literally okay. is about an airsofter who literally goes to another world. And here's the kicker: he's able to come back and forth between our world, so he can keep doing his job to keep buying the expensive freaking guns so all he has to do is get the airsoft like the toy version taken into this world this dimension the universe whatever and it it's it's a real gun Mm -hmm. with unlimited ammo Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that would be cool and like i said it legitimately is fun and before you go and analyze 
the cover because people have ignore the beautiful dark elf and focus on the main character in the background who has a barrack <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny yeah. Again, this this manga. If you want to get into the media reviews, this is a good jumping point for you because as an airsofter, you're going to be analyzing, going like, that is a fifth. That is an eighty dollar pistol. That is a hundred and forty dollar rifle. That is a two hundred dollar Okamori shotgun. <sighs> it's my dream gun. I ain't talking <laughs> about the Barrett. I ain't even talking about the MGL he uses. I ain't even talking about the fact that at one point when he's fighting a Kraken, he's using the Spaz-12 with Dragon's Breath Thrones. Oh, shit. Nice. I ain't even talking about the RPG. Or, yeah, again, the Barrett. No, I'm talking about the M250 Cal that he has. Again, 500,000 yen. <laughs> How does this man have that kind of money? I wouldn't go to the comments section. I would tell you right now, don't, don't ever go to the comments <laughs> section. <laughs> Although there are some good memes. Uh, there's Parry some good this. memes. Parry this, you filthy casual. That's <laughs> uh, funny. But again, you will have a blast with this manga. You really will. And like I said, if you want to bookmark it, that's fine. There's a lot of cool things. I mean, there's some other stupid ones, but yeah. Getting back to what we were, what I was talking about with my child, with childhoods being preserved. There are two channels that are on YouTube. Okay, that's a lie. There are several channels, but <laughs> two prominent ones: Orbital Bacon, which has preserved a lot of good shows and even uploaded them in volumes. And there's even one which is like retro repeat, which is actually where I found Brave Star. Like I completely oh, missed Brave okay. Star. I I know Transformers. Uh, I know. Uh, oh my god, I'm trying to think. Oh no, not Retro Repeat. My god, <laughs> my god. Let me How go to my you? side. Let me go to my side. Just type in Brave Star, and you will find it. Retro Bit Bites. That's what it is. Retro Bites is what it is. <laughs> my god. But yeah, again, all of Brave Star. How did I miss Brave Star growing up? Oh. Like, yeah, this is crazy. You know what? I This is one of the things I really love about YouTube and Rumble. I like all these different video, mm -hmm. uh, ch just the social media in general. Like mm -hmm. you can, you know, even Facebook, you can upload uh, full videos and stuff. I've been doing that on my uh, on my Airsoft page on, on uh, yeah. Facebook. I just started recently. I, I only used to tag, you know, put the mm -hmm. link in there or whatever. But now mm -hmm. I'm actually uploading the full episode in case somebody wants to watch it on there. And um, it yeah, really is but... like a log. It, it's like a log of all these different things that we're preserving. Oh, oh, it gets better. It gets better. Go to Orbital Bacon and just look at this man. Look at what this brave person is doing and just go to the playlist and you will find just all this stuff. It's how I was able to find Mummies Alive. Like he's Full on freaking programming blocks, but it's all about the uh, the lovely women. But yeah, I did not know about the RoboCop show. I did not know about Invasion America, Conan, Galaxy Rangers, none of this stuff. Yeah, I didn't. And then the one that made me come down this rabbit hole of media preservation, rinse, repeat. And for those who are not watching. Rinse Repeat actually uploads full programming blocks with commercials and all from all the way of the 70s. What? To, yeah, again, Rinse Repeat. R I N S E Repeat. <laughs> right there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Rinse Repeat. This dude. Just, this is crazy. He's, like I said, he has uploaded not only the holiday stuff. He's Nickelodeon. Done he's done Adult Christmas. Adult Swim. Cartoon Network. Toonami. Fox Kids. Toonami. Sci-Fi Channel. It's, I cannot. Oh, that's wild. I cannot stress, ladies and gentlemen, these people, these channels, if you ever get a chance to, go check them out. Relive your childhoods. Because this dude uploaded 
like I was watching all of this during Christmas time. I was <laughs> watching the Christmas stuff because I was like, oh, I'm tired of Hallmark being on all the time. I'm tired <laughs> of this bullshit thing that I've seen. I've already seen storyline wise. I found this dude because I typed in Christmas specials. And I found not only one that did the Rack and Boss Christmas block, mm. but I also found him doing the Fox Kids Christmas, the Cartoon Network Christmas, all the Christmases, even WB Kids Christmas. And I just sat down my happy butt and I turned it on and I let the nostalgia hit me and I was my young self again in front of the huge brick of a TV with the big glowing like protruding glass screen <laughs> sitting way too close like oh, i was i was back i was back there i was happy i was smiling I, all the world's problems were gone right and i was just here in my childhood and then I found Orbital Bacon and I found all these other channels and it's just like I found all these other preservation channels that are preserving all these programming blocks. Yeah. Well, once you go down that rabbit hole, like this is the the wonderful thing about the algorithm that we talk about that gives us our feed, right? All mm -hmm. of our feeds mm -hmm. and whatever social media you're on. Mm -hmm. You I mean, it opens up your world like crazy, bro, because you're things that pop up that you'd never heard of, you never would have found. Oh yeah. Oh yep. yeah. Like oh my god. Brave Star is one that could not be made today. Yes, it's from the 80s, but that show could not be made today. Like, oh, most of those things, bro, they're like, <laughs> no way. <laughs> Mummies Alive is a is a wild one and definitely would not be made today. But Mummies Alive, literally the whole premise is that this one kid is the reborn pharaoh. Or hell, the intro does it for, you, for me. I'm just going to let the intro play. <laughs> Okay, he's a pharaoh. Yep. Oh Mummy, God, robot. So what 90s. is this? Like transformer looking dudes. <laughs> this is so 90s. I love it. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, oh that mummy. That's crazy. Could someone get this kid? Oh, oh that is 90s music right there, bro. That is definitely totally not selling toys at all. <laughs> right? Totally don't buy our toys. I mean, how many episodes do you have on here, bro? That's a two hour and 20 minute video. He must there have are, the whole. It's the whole thing. That's all, crazy. All 47 episodes. And the what? female mommy, the female mommy, that's for those who are wondering who that voice is. That's agent number five from K&D. That is. Penny from Inspector Gadget. What? Yeah, the female mummy. That's who the voice actress what? is. Let's find her. Oh, you 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 want me to back up a little bit? Oh my god. We have the smart one, obviously. You know, all all, all 90s superheroes gotta have the smart one. <laughs> oh, there's the strong one. <laughs> Even though he's got one arm. <laughs> and, and that dude back there, who do you think that dude is? Mm. Oh, wait, he'll come back. Don't worry. Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. We will we'll be identifying you, the mummies, with their dragster car. Yeah, it is. <laughs> there he is again. Yeah, he's back there, like the quiet one. <laughs> uh, and, now, and the strong guy's eating the food. So we've got okay. So we got the strong guy, and we have got the dude who eats all the food. Oh, he's not that smart. Oh, no, no, we got. Yeah, we got he's the a, he's the meathead. He's the dumb one. <laughs> oh, right there he is. Oh my goodness! Don't buy our toys. I mean, buy the toys. <laughs> oh my god! And there's the mom, the single mom. Dude, Always this is working. wild. Yeah. So where where the heck do they find these um, videos where they can? I don't know. They it must have to... like the uh, the channels, right? That uh, like on some of the cable services that play like old stuff and then record them. That's insane. Yeah, they it, it has to like e either that or they found like the old DVDs, like mm. lost media stuff, and they just re oh, that's true. Them. Like you remember, dude. Back I was talking to somebody recently that that went to a, a yard sale, 
and somebody had a whole box of like really old DVDs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true. Oh my God. That's funny. Robocop. And to our younger, and to our younger audiences watching, you don't know the pain that me and every other nineties kid had to go through. Cause here's the thing. If we wanted a show, especially on VHS, I still have my VHS tapes over here oh, on my awesome. shelf. If we wanted a show, we bought a VHS tape that may have had three episodes. Mm -hmm. If we were lucky, four episodes on it. <laughs> most. And that's not even counting the commercials that played before it. Right. And then, of course, when the DVDs started coming out, it's like, oh, yes, you could totally have your favorite anime or TV show on DVD for volume one of five episodes. And if you get the special edition volume one, you get six. And it's like, you motherfuckers. You sons of bitches. <laughs> That's what they do, man. That's what they do. Just, just begrudgingly back in the day, just give them my money and just be like, <laughs> I will take my volume one. But I'm not going to like it. Not going to like it. Oh, that's funny, man. Yeah. And, and like I said, like to everyone listening, Orbital Bacon, rinse, repeat. If you want to relive your childhoods or retro bites, these three yeah. channels on YouTube have archived these lost medias so that way you can show them to your kids. And to everyone who is a fellow 90s kid, it is our sacred duty to show these shows to the young generation so they know how tubular and radical they are. <laughs> right. I'm just saying, man, like it's our job to do that. Like it, it, it's one of those things. But uh, aside from media, and believe me, media is a very important thing, especially when it comes to Airsoft. Like, if you look Absolutely. at media nowadays, you will see how much Airsoft has influenced it now. Mm. How much stuff is now being influenced in Airsoft because of media. Fallout. Mm -hmm. And totally because, let's face it, because of popular media on many big streaming services, people are now doing a lot of cool loadouts. Fallout. And doing really <laughs> cool gun builds. Fallout. And <laughs> totally playing the games and enjoying the other media because of these cool, successful media. Fallout. <laughs> For real. Oh, this was my first actually sponsor, sponsored anything, really. Man Store Inc., sadly, is no longer a thing. But this was one of the ones that I keep getting answers about or questions about. And this was my old setup, like back, back, back before I had my TV sitting right here on my Chester drawers that you're saying. Was this right there the, uh, the one? Is this a Fallout build? N no, this was a uh, okay. this was a Man Store Inc. Uh, sponsored thing where I did a takedown on the HK416 they had refurbished. And if you know what I'm talking about, folks, you know about it. But of course, Double Eagle had to have come out with a new version of it. Uh, but I'm <laughs> totally not saying, you know, it's on Amazon right now for like around 100 bucks and it has a really cool collapsible stock and totally, totally not telling you to go check it out and probably, you know, get it. <laughs> totally not doing that. Uh, but yeah, the big thing, though, is that I've always been messaged on this. People asking me, hey, how do I get the stock off? What screws the stock using? Even though mm. I explain in the freaking video. I was just going to say, you just showed. Like, it is a square. Not even two minutes in. <laughs> it is a square bolt. That's weird. Head. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, my God. And that, that, that pisses me off. I've stopped responding to the comments, honestly, in my older videos just because I know I've explained it in the videos. Now, the big thing, though, is that with this, this is what's actually kind of cool about this. Um. It's not threaded, sadly, but the big thing is that you can actually upgrade this because it takes V2 gearbox parts inside. Mm. You'd have to be careful, of course, and you'd have to probably 3D print out stuff, but you could actually upgrade the HK416s, or at least the Double Eagle HK416s. Uh, and this is me using my GoPro, of course, because, you know, I, I, I just... I love that view, though, when you're working on something. Yeah. But again, yeah. I, I wish I wish I could do better. I legitimately wish I could. But yeah, <clears throat> the, the no, big this thing is though, great, dude. This is like yeah. a really good because when you're it, it, like you don't have to worry about manually zooming in and, and like mm -hmm. uh, you know editing and whatever you're doing it as you're whatever you're looking at and getting close to like you're we can follow very easily. 
and you don't sway your head around too much. Like it's not, uh, it's very easy to follow. Well, I'm definitely not a guy from New Delhi in India. I mean, I'm not going to do like this. I'm not going to dip my head on the day like this. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. But getting the flash header off this thing was so fucking annoying. Like it so really. So you couldn't heat it and then unscrew it? Because the barrel itself was plastic, sadly. Oh, oh, oh. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, yep. that, and that's what sucked. That's what really sucked, sadly. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> now. Well, that's a good idea. What you're doing, though, is mm -hmm. clipping it apart piece by piece. Yeah. Yeah. And I have done okay. a lot of really interesting stuff, honestly. And yeah, I, I, again, it's definitely a hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. But when it comes to like loadouts and stuff and you can find my loadout videos just by going to my channel or time just going to the playlist, I'm doing a sector loadouts of sector nine type stuff. I have built some really cool stuff. I've done some really interesting loadouts. I have done so much stuff. And it's insane uh, how much I've done because I, I I don't know how to explain it. It's it is so wild. And I've oh, even done what are you I've dremeling? Even done, yeah, Cutting it off, yeah. I wish I had yeah, I wish I had my Dremel still. I wish I did, but I've lost that somewhere. God only knows somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Are you trying to preserve? Do you preserve the threads on that? Um, or is it glued it has, on? It's probably glued, it's glued on. on. It's glued on. And it, it, there's no threads. There's sadly. probably no threads because it's plastic. Right, right. Okay. Yep. Sad to say. Huh. Mm-hmm. And. <laughs> so what were you, were you going to glue another one on? Like no, a one? I just. At that time, I was, I just said, fuck it. You know, I just, you were just trying to get it off. Okay. I was just trying to get it off. I was yeah. just trying to get to do and just, I wanted to get the stupid thing off. That's all <laughs> I wanted to do. Like, <laughs> yes. Just, I just wanted to get it out. Like, uh, I, just, I just wanted to do it. That's all I wanted to do. Most of the ones we've had where I took the orange tip off were, they came off pretty decent, like pretty easy. You know, I heat them up. They had metal barrels and um, they come right off. There was, two one of them was an m4 style and i don't i can't remember what brand it was but it was threaded on then glued and then it had a cotter pin shoved into it mm -hmm. i could not get the cotter pin out bro like it was pissing me off so bad i couldn't figure out which way to pound it i had i had punches to get them out and uh this thing was just glued in so bad i heat it heat it try to punch it out couldn't get it i ended up doing what you're doing here I cut, mm -hmm. I melted the whole freaking uh, orange tip, just globs, right? I mean, I've just torched the shit out of it and <laughs> just like drooping down. And then I peeled it off with like uh, needle nose pliers like that. Yep. And the cotter pin still didn't come out. Okay. I had to drill it out. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I understand your frustration with some of these. <laughs> That's crazy. But yeah, the, to try to get it off of the plastic, that would be very difficult. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for real. The big thing is that one of, and this kind of comes to my review style, basically. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm sharing it via Facebook, obviously, because again, I don't know the thing. This is one of my more fun reviews I ever had, just because, hey, you know, going until 13 minutes, 31 seconds in, I had a fun explaining this, but context basically for this review is that mass effect arcs is a if if you want to pause it basically um is is more or less a what would happen if arcs of humanity came from a dying world that just so happened to have been destroyed by god not new testament god old testament god <laughs> And they sent out these arcs to basically save two men who were the arc mother and arc father and so many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of children. Hmm. Yeah. And they sent them out into deep space and they just so happened to be found by several people. They were found by the Asari. They were found by the Turians. They were found by the Krogan, which the Krogan one. Oh, dear God. I'm not going to say anything, guys. I'm just going to say this right now. What I'm, I'm, I will spoil one arc. I will spoil one arc for you guys. Do the it. Krogan arc is literally the Norse gods. 
they literally turned the Kroganali into space Vikings, which, yes, is an awesome, awesome image you <laughs> think of, but also space, space Scotsmen. <laughs> Like if if you're in the Highlands, the Highland Krogan are just Highland Scot the space Scotsmen with their space sheep and their space cows and their space bagpipes and their space shillelis. <laughs> but yeah, if you if you if you take the video here and you back it up a little bit, because I break down the different fronts, because as time goes on, um basically the the, the civilization is literally just kind of hey. We've built up good enough. Now we're to the point of, you know, we're, we're going to basically want these humans who we've raised as kids kind of go on their own. So they create Zion, and it, it's supposed to be basically the unity showing how much the galaxy has unified because of these people, how much the mm. technology has changed, how much everything has changed, and it's supposed to be peaceful. Until the Systems Alliance shows up, and it turns into Reach. Oh, Correction, Lord. Not Reach, the Seven Day War. And uh, yeah, going back a bit, if you want to go back to about four minutes, I start breaking down the front lines, uh, the different fronts, basically. And this is where my creativity comes into play. Ah, yes, the Southern Front, Rhodesia, the t the Toyota Wars, the Grassland Wars, the Bush Wars. It's, it's basically just it's basically just Africa and the Middle East combined. <laughs> I'm Zion, but Rhodesia never dies. But yeah, like I said, that's one of the things I love doing on my channel is, aside from Airsoft content, I do media content. I even did a whole month dedicated to War of the Worlds. Oh, that's cool. I'm talking all War of the Worlds media, including the Jeff Waynes stuff, which, speaking of Jeff Waynes, give me a hot second, because I found this at a flea market for 30 bucks. What? It, yeah, just, just give me a hot second. <laughs> what the hell is that an old album the original jeff wayne's war of the worlds musical with the cover art of the fighting machine attacking the thunder child with an art book in it that is crazy. These things go between 80 and well over $300. Where did you find this? I found it at a flea market for 30 bucks. That's awesome. I have listened to it and it is. I was going to say, so do you have a vinyl? Do you have a record I, player? I do have a record player and it is so, that's so awesome, good. Dude. And yeah. I listen to the, I, I will listen to Jeff Wayne's. Like I am a, that's how much of an avid war. Like if I had to describe myself, in terms of my actual favorite fandoms, I love Fallout to death. I love video games to death. They're a great escape. Fallout included. I love reading manga and anime and watching anime and reading fan fictions that are actually well written and actually do are, are actually thought provocative and I do have fun with. I will even read all this other stuff over here that I find interesting, including Sherlock Holmes, because don't get me wrong, I love Sherlock Holmes. I really do. It's a wonderful read to have on a Saturday night with a nice glass of Jack, some soft music playing in the background, and a bowl of cherries to enjoy. I have just described my Saturday. In, I've, I've described the Saturday night when I'm well alone in the house, and I have no one disturbing me. <laughs> I am allowed to be happy for once in my life. That sounds awesome. That sounds amazing. But my main obsession. My main autistic obsession that I can just laser beam focus on and I will scare people with is War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. That and, again, firearms, but H.G. Wells. <laughs> because the setup and the premise is so good, it has lasted for generations. An alien invasion that is a... And again, many different interpretations of it, but for me, talking about an, a, a commentary on the British expansionism and its colonialism at the time and the fact of they believed, oh, we were invincible. Nothing can bring down the empire of the never setting sun. Two world wars would like to uh, debate you on that, but... <laughs> 
again, it, that, that's why I love World of Worlds. Is it's been interpreted and and just done so many ways. Mm-hmm. Science fiction as a whole has a lot to thank H.G. Wells for. And yes, people are going to probably sound off in the comments section. What about Jules Verne? Yes, I will give Jules Verne his credit. But the man who invented tabletop gaming, H.G. Wells. The man who mm. gave us the concept of the tank, H.G. Wells. The man who literally is the grandfather of science fiction, arguably could not have science fiction stories we have today, sci-fi invasions we have today. Arguably, all the sci-fi events we go to in airsoft, paintball, nerf, even video games today has to be given and credited to Mr. H.G. Wells. Boom. You heard it, people. It's the truth. It is. He the said what he said, God okay? <laughs> <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, like, I did a month to, to War of the Worlds because I love the stuff so much, and no one talks about a lot of the stuff that they don't talk about because, no joke, if you go to type in anything, and I'm not telling you to do it now. I'm telling you to do it later. If you go type in War of the Worlds comics... Yeah, You will find a ton of comics that no one talks about, including one where it's set during the First World War, mm. much like the Great Martian War, except unlike the Great Martian War, which is set in 1913, this is set right in 1915 to 1916, the heated point of the war, where a Martian cylinder comes down right there in between the French and German trenches and just raises hell. Really? And now the war is put on hold because now they got to fight the Martians and they're losing. Oh, that's and amazing. Yeah, it even gets better. The comic even shows Albert Einstein and even brings in Mr. Wells himself. Even talks about the, I can't remember the name of the Russian forest, but there was a Russian forest that was literally hit by a meteorite and created a massive crater and just laid trees down flat as can be. Mm. They're still down to this day. And I don't know if it was I don't know if it was Russia or if it was Germany, one of the two basically. But it was so so good seeing a lot of these elements actually being used in this comic book, which is literally World War of the Worlds. Hmm. You, you see what they did with the work yeah, there? Absolutely. Yeah, and and that's what's kind of cool. And again, if you're a big fan of like the Great Martian War, which yes, is on YouTube, fully for anyone to see. It's a great mockumentary, and I I did do a video on it, and I I legitimately love it just because I wish they would actually make a movie about it. Like, again, a World War I where it's literally 1913 technology and and war, like France, Britain, Russia, all these countries fighting against the Martians with World Hmm. War I technology. That's crazy. Yeah, and it literally, again, same thing as ours. Europe is cut in half. And and they're just bombarding the Martians to hell and back. And the reason for the gas mass is because, oh, Martians are emitting a, a, a black chemical gas. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> but, but, but seriously, though, that's why I love H.G. Wells, because you can see his influence and the War of the Worlds influence throughout all of media. Alien invasion story? H.G. Wells. Aliens defeated by a common cold? H.G. Wells. Hmm. Crazy, insane technology that it was called out long ago, that is predicted long ago, that we have now? H.G. Mr. Science Fiction Father himself, Wells. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my small tangent aside, let's give it... <laughs> but, but, but in all seriousness, though, um, again, that's why I kind of got into media reviews. Yeah, and I I I do them because legitimately I do have a passion for media. I legitimately do love them, and I don't try to go into like a lot of other stereotype reviewers of saying, "Oh, this is what happened in the background. This is what happened in the the this stuff." I do it strictly for the story. Yeah, if it's a good story, who cares what happened? The story, in my opinion, should be more important than the people around. Well, I'm not saying you know in movies or anything. I'm saying sure. you no. Know, like when it comes to movies and TV shows, yes, the people who do them should be as important as the story itself. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to, like, say, a novel, I don't care about the author's life unless it actually influenced the story. 
Exactly. Right. Like James and the Giant Peach, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Mm -hmm. The author was a spy during World War II who literally banged out information from women. I'm not joking on that. That's actually a thing. Right. Like the author who did these things literally. I remember hearing in, about that. Yeah. He fought in World War II, mm -hmm. got shot down, was recruited to be a spy. And he was just banging women night after <laughs> night until he was finally just like, dude, I'm banged out. I can't keep going. Give me a better post where I don't got to bang any more women. <laughs> like that, that, that legitimately was <laughs> what happened. <laughs> yeah. But yeah I, I will bring that up as, as like a anecdotal thing, but Again, that, that's that's what I do basically is is with my media reviews is I will just focus on the story. Were you were you always into reading? Like what what age? Um, well, first off, what age did you uh, realize or did your parents realize that you were like uh, that you had autism or like that? Um, what was how did that pro progress? Pretty early on, actually, because this was back when I was probably first, second grade, give or take. I believe it's when it was it was first or second grade when they finally realized oh I, they finally tested me saying hey I was autistic, and this is where a dark thing comes into play. Cannot name the school for legal reasons, uh, but this is my first school I went to, and they got approached by a pharmaceutical company back in the nineties, and they wanted to test out a Ritalin that barely passed human trials uh, on some special ed kids. Needless to say, I lost weight. Uh, and then I was legally dead for five minutes. Whoa. I was, I somewhat remember this. It was during PE. I was running around having fun and then I just blacked out. I was, I was blacked out. Next thing I know, I wake up in a hospital bed and it wasn't until years later I found out, oh yeah, I was legally dead for like five minutes. And the sad part is that that crap is still in my system. I am literally trying my best to gain weight to kind of replace the weight I've lost over the years. I am 30 years old and I'm still not able to hold on to weight as much as I want. Hmm. And the sad thing is they have given me treatment options. It's just, it's not a fun treatment and I could very well fucking die from it. Hmm. And what it is, is they literally have to flush out all the blood in my system. Pretty much like a dialysis type of thing. Filter uh, all your stuff out. Yeah, except it's literally, and I asked, what do you mean by all my blood? And they're like, well, we would have to sedate you already. This is sounding horrible, but go on. <laughs> and we would have to literally have you under sedation as we literally transfer your blood out and filter in new blood, clean blood. Mm. And I'm like, and the survivability rating of this? There is a 50-50 chance you may die. Wow. And I'm like, you know what? I'm fine. I'm cool. I'm great. You know what? I'm I'm gonna live life. I'm gonna I'm I'm just gonna go eat a lot of food. I'm fine. <laughs> Not no 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 you nope 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 I'm good. Bye bye. Okay. Yeah. Have a good day. God mm. bless. <laughs> like that that's my story basically in my autism. Yeah. Basically, like I survived a nineties pharmaceutical company experiment. <laughs> Yeah, that's not good, man. That's crazy. Well, the reason I'm asking, I'm asking for two reasons. One is about the autism thing. My my grandson is three, mm -hmm. and from a a very early age, he was um, my son and and daughter in law were were a little concerned because he was showing signs like he wouldn't talk, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, he was smart. Mm -hmm. He's very observant, but it, completely quiet until he had a fit. Like he's completely happy, everything's fine, mm -hmm. and then I mean, it would take something to spark it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, he drops his toy, or mm -hmm. he can't find it, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then it's freak out moment. You know, that would be again going back to earlier on in the podcast where I talked about how autistic people, our emotions yeah. are can be just just on a flip can change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What it is is. When it comes to autistic people, especially me, even though I'm in my 30s, I will still have moments where I will be emotionally overstimulated, mm. where I th – there are places where we feel safe, where we feel like this is our safe space. This is where we are happy. This is where we know everything is. If something is out of place, 
I mean, just, just even an inch out of place, we lose it. Hmm. And I'm not talking like, oh, OCD, lose it. No, I'm talking if something we know is there is gone, missing, and we know it was right there, we will fucking flip our shit. We will lose it. Hmm. Because in our mind, in my mind even, like if I lost one of my favorite like stuffed animals, like I, I have this stuffed bear that I've had since I was like five, six years old. Yes, I know. Everyone's going to be like, oh, you got a stuffed bear too. It's a sentimental thing. But at the same time, in my mind, I like to hold it. And I like to basically, if I'm having like uh, an, 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 an episode, basically, yeah. I'm upset. I'm overstimulated. I will grab that bear. I will hold on to it. And I will just rock myself back and forth. Yeah, they have a, a word for that. Like it's, uh, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you, you have this mm -hmm. thing where it kind of centers you or whatever. Mm -hmm. It centers me basically. Yeah. It's my center point. Yeah. If that thing was to go missing. Mm. I would murder someone to try and yeah, find that bear. Freak out moment. Yeah. Yeah. Cause again, that is a, that is my safe thing. That is something uh -huh. I know is there. And that is something I can hold on to. And I am completely okay. And right with the world. See, uh, this makes a lot of sense with, um, mm -hmm. with my grandson because he's three now and he's gotten a lot better with it. And he is starting to talk. Like he, we know he can talk. Mm -hmm. uh, he he'll, he'll repeat what people say mm -hmm. um he can tell time like he'll see the clock and he'll he'll you know say what time it is uh yeah. but he'll mm. he he loves cars and trucks so the little plastic cars and trucks you know my wife we get a new set for him every like every week mm -hmm. and we'll to keep it here because when he leaves to go home when he, you know like we had them last weekend and um when he leaves to go home we learned a long time ago, we don't try to take it from him because it's really not that important to us that it stays here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He's not hurting anything. He's not hurting mm -hmm. it. He's not, you know, um, I mean, it's not like he, we, we can teach him in the house. Like if he goes around and when he was younger, if he's touching knickknacks or whatever, you know, something that's on here, like a glass thing that my wife has, uh, we'll tell him, you know, Dom, no on this, whatever. He's fine. But mm -hmm. he always has the whatever one thing it is he's hanging on to for those couple weeks this little yellow car tr or car or truck mm -hmm. if you take that from him bro look out he flips he flips oh, out he basically. flips out that's like his centering thing like i mm -hmm. it's, it's making sense now but yeah. um again that's yeah, that's so. that's his favorite thing uh one mm -hmm. thing to definitely do because you're saying he's nonverbal and at one and and i've met a lot of other fellow autistic people who are also kind of like that they're going up nonverbally it's it's more or less how their brain is wired is mm -hmm. my best way to say it. because we're kind of we're learning the world around us. We're kind of, we're not, it's basically, we're not, it's not that he's not interested. It's not that he's a mute. No, it's uh, just, no, he can talk. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just that he does, he has no interest in talking. Mm. He doesn't really see the point. It, it, it's more or less his mind is kind of forming its own decision of saying, Hey, I, I, and deciding whether or not I want to see the, whether I want to talk or if I don't want to talk mm -hmm. basically, like I'm, I'm much better off not talking versus I'd be better off talking. Yeah. And there have been people who have been like mute all their life, have mm. no means to communicate. And they'll, and they'll yeah. have like those little wrist things that they use to communicate with basically. Oh, okay. See, I knew a guy in the eighties that was, he was like in his forties, but he, 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 he never talked his whole life. Mm -hmm. He would just grunt. He was autistic, <clears throat> really extreme autism, you know, autism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's basically because again, it's, it's one of those weird things of people are autistic. People are differently wired. Hmm. And this kind of comes into play, especially when it comes to like our interest. Like with me, I love airsoft guns because of how they work. I've always been that kind of guy who loves taking things apart, trying to figure out how it works. I just love getting into the guts of it. Mm. Whether or not I can get it back together and make it work is basically – that's when I start getting frustrated. That's when I start getting overstimulated. That's when I start getting really hot, mm -hmm. and that's kind of where it is. With your grandson, uh, here's what I recommend you do. You know those engines, you know those those – take apart engines that could actually you can make it run you know that yeah. sort of thing get one of those hmm. and, and just kind of see if that's his actual interest see if he is interested in actually trying to understand how something works yeah or kind of how it does because if that's the case then he is interested that can be a early sign of he is interested in mechanical like engineering stuff right. like understanding how something works and that is also when he gets old enough that's kind of a nice gateway into airsoft even because Absolutely. again, what is a gearbox and AEG 
but a mechanical engine. Well, see, now that I'm thinking about it, he's um, I'm trying to remember. We don't we don't have any intricate toys like that for him. But the one thing that he's had was like this car carrier, you know, like a car, a truck, one of those transport trucks that, mm -hmm. where, you know, where they deliver cars to like uh, dealerships and stuff. Yeah. Um, and he had mini cars that would go up, that would fit up into it. And mm -hmm. he would set it down, put the cars up in there, move the truck over here, take them out, take, you know, and it was like, he likes those steps, right, mm -hmm. in the process. But we don't we don't really have anything that he could take apart and put together mm -hmm. like that. That's a mm -hmm. good idea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because again, it, it it's more or less a a, a process of elimination. Mm -hmm. Like, is does he like counting? Does he like you know taking things apart, putting it back together? Me, I loved taking things apart and putting it back together. I could not tell you what like six plus six equaled at the time at, at that point in my age yeah uh english was not my best strong suit even today english is not my best strong suit even today <laughs> like i can speak no get me wrong i am a great like audible person i right. love speaking i love being able to talk to people and being able to see their emotions yeah. and and kind of hear the the, the decibels in their voice their the, the way they speak mm. Text is a completely different thing because I have to guess what people are saying, and that's kind of my uh, autism thing. Yeah. Is if I can speak to you and I can see you and I can understand you, right? That's good for me. But text, yeah, text is like the absence of feeling, like the absence. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, body language. There's no fluctuation in voice and in tone and uh, like the yeah. There's you have nothing to go by. That's why I always laugh when. Mm -hmm. Typically, women in my life, like my daughters or my wife or whatever, they'll go, they sent me a mean text. I'm like, well, what did it say? And it's really basic. And I'm like, well, yeah. how do you know it's mean? Well, uh, be, and I'm like, well, what are you getting that from? Like, I, I read it. I don't, it's not mean. <laughs> exactly. And and that's kind of the other thing is, yeah. and, th and this is the big one, is that when it comes to, and, and this is coming from someone who plays, who plays Airsoft and is autistic, when it comes to airsoft, a lot of people will automatically assume, oh, autistic people cannot handle, you know, a high stress environment. They can't yeah. handle it. And it's like, <laughs> well, number one, that's a bold face assumption. Uh, number two, that is a bold face lie because you've just eliminated half the autistic people who are actually higher on the spectrum and actually can communicate, can actually handle high stress environments to a degree. Yeah. That's only the lower on the spectrum people who can't handle high stress environments. Those are the ones who have the headphones. That's the ones who basically mm. can't you know, do that. Don't get me wrong. I hated crowds. Yeah. But with Airsoft, I it's it's something about the order and structure around it is what mm. makes me happy and comfortable and safe around it. Yeah. And and I love Airsoft because again, this is coming from someone who is again was bullied a lot in high school and junior right. high because, you know, oh, I was the Again, gonna drop the hard R here. I was that retarded kid. Yeah, the retard. And, yeah, yeah. I was that kid. Mm -hmm. And when I was picked on a lot, it just kind of airsoft was very much so that place of I could go out, meet yeah. actual people of like-minded mindsets, actually kind of grow more from them, and actually have a safe place yeah it's very safe could, and it's it's majority of airsofters at events and stuff wherever they go are are welcoming they're very mm -hmm. they are what we're supposed to be in life mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. <laughs> like good manners uh mm -hmm. good respect that's mm -hmm. what we're supposed to be mm -hmm. but yeah you go it's funny because when you're in school in the school underneath the roof of schools elementary mm -hmm. middle school high school people are vicious they're vile. Oh, yeah. They're like the exact opposite. And then you, even some of these guys, you take them out like uh, and put them into this airsoft environment. They'll learn like, oh, this is oh, OK, because some mm -hmm. of them aren't the ones that are instigating the bullying. They're kind of just no. following along, whatever. But yeah, they're uh, they're like, oh, man, this is crazy. Like, this is how we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. OK, mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah, well, that, with, that worked out good for you for sure then. Yeah, and with Airsoft, this is what kind of helped out is that, again, going back to the emotional stuff, when it comes to autistic people, we do get easily depressed. A mm. lot, And this is an actual thing. A lot of autistic people actually have undiagnosed depression or they legitimately do get to that point of 
you know, considering the mm -hmm. option one should not consider when being depressed. Sure. I, I'm not going to say I wasn't at that point in my life. I have been at that point in my life more than a few times. Mm -hmm. I have lost a lot of family in my lifetime growing up, and yes, I have been depressed. And then, of course, I found outlets to kind of help out with that. Yeah. Uh, when my grandmother sadly died last year in December, of all things, uh, before Christmas, uh, I just – I was not in a good place. Mm. And then – I went over to Sector 9 Airsoft and just played. I just, I just, I worked through my emotions through that because, again, when it comes to emotional stuff, especially death, air, uh, autistic people do not handle it very well or they try to handle it logically. And even then, that makes them even more depressed. Sure. If you give them a healthy outlet to work out these emotions, where they can replace the depress, the sadness, the anguish, the mm -hmm. the the emotions that are confusing us with something that actually gives us that dopamine release, that that exhilaration, the adrenaline makes us smile, makes us happy. Yes, it's painful. Don't get me wrong. Getting shot in the nuts is not a good thing. <laughs> but I'm still laughing and I'm having fun telling dude, hey, good shot, good shot. Dead man walking, dead man walking. Yeah. Because, again, going out and playing airsoft helps me – just feel honestly legitimately happy i mean yes reading a book also does the same thing but it's not the same as being able to move my body being able to kind of express yeah. myself through body language and that's another thing about autistic people is and, and this is what's sad a, a a girl influencer actually was laughed off of all social media platforms because she went to the ocean and saw a school of whales or a pot of whales whichever one you would go to she was autistic and she was moving her body, moving her hands, literally doing all this to kind of express this bodily, just, 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 just happy expression through our bodies. And she was mocked off of all social media platforms because of it. Hmm. And I have been there myself. I have anyone who's ever played with me at sector nine can tell that when, when, one of my favorite game modes will come up, I will giggle. I will laugh. I will make noises. I will jump a little bit. I'll even shake my hands a little bit. I will grin. I will verbally and physically show how excited I am for a game mode. And and, and two of them that I actually love playing absolutely at Sector Nine Airsoft is not only Team Deathmatch because we're in like this we're 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 cut we're concerned we're cut off we're basically close together. I'm having fun at these things. Um. The other one is, of course, Kick the Can. And Kick the Can, for those who don't know what Kick the Can is, fun game mode. You have a barrel. The barrel is right here at the starting point. What a team must do is take this barrel and get it either to or in the other team's base. Here's what you can't do with the barrel. You cannot lift it over your head and throw it. You cannot <laughs> just, you know... Lift it off the ground. No, it has to be on the ground. It's got to be stayed on the ground. And most of the time, oh, oh, oh and then other one, it's got to be on the road. So this is what we do. We kick the can. We try to give it <laughs> enough momentum so that way it's just rolling and rolling and rolling, 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 rolling. Ah. Uh, Great song. Good song. Good song for those <laughs> who don't know that song. Uh, <laughs> and 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 that's why I love that game. I love game modes that actually legitimately are like I have a physical object to kind of push, and I'm just like, I'm I'm just being like, because <laughs> again, <laughs> drilling going through fear of getting shot, and it's just uh -huh. like no 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 no. Because no. as soon as I get a pan, and this is me, you know it's me when I'm on the can, because I'm sitting over here going like, roll, 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 roll. and then as soon as I get to a certain point, I will verbally yell no 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 no. <laughs> And I'll just go to the nearest cover because I am not getting shot. So my teammates <laughs> come up and they cover me and they're like, go kick the can. And I'm like, I'm going to kick the can. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like like I said, Second Nine is actually a really cool field. And, and and Airsoft has actually helped me out a lot, especially kind of helped me get out of my shell because sure. uh, this is another thing that uh, a lot of people don't understand about a lot about a lot of the uh, other autistic aspects of life when it comes to an autistic person. Uh, when it comes to social interactions, and I'm still bad about this, like I will, I'll happily say this right now. I do not pick up on social cues mm. ever, and we are horribly forgetful about some things, or I am at least. And this has gotten me in trouble a lot, like 
yesterday was Mother's Day, and I I got in trouble with my own mother, and it just I was trying to do good by her because in my mind I was thinking, hey, if I get her a really good gift, you know, maybe she'll forgive me because I'm over here spending time with this with the stepmother. Um, uh, you know, because, mm. you know, I'm trying to basically, because I, I try to be that person who's center. Like I'm trying to keep people from being nice. I'm trying to be nice to everyone. I'm trying to be, you know, I'm trying to be friends with everyone. And instead of like, oh, Hey, you know, she totally understands. It's more of, I just got, I, I, I got a basic dressing down basically. Mm. You know, I, I was basically told, Hey, you should have been here. And it's all this other stuff. And, and again, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, so you didn't like the gift. I'm completely uh, just oblivious to why my mother is upset. And it just, it, it, again, one of those things of I am horrible with social cues. A lot of other people are horrible with social cues also, but sure. with autistic oh, yeah. people, it's definitely a lot worse because. I say that's probably uh, most guys out here that are married, that <laughs> they have kids, that they're uh, like, <laughs> look, dude, ooh, I've been there. Okay. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. With mm -hmm. anniversaries, with birthdays, with uh, Mother's <laughs> Days, with, yep. <laughs> yeah, but 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 like I said, with autism, it's a lot worse because, and I'm not saying worse in a, in a bad sense of oh no. hey yeah no it's 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 incurable. I'm saying it worse in the sense of people have caused other autistic people to do things that they shouldn't do, and and one of the most idiotic ones, and and this is where I heard the story through the grapevine basically, but there was this young kid who was told by his friends, hey, if you go over to those black guys and say the N-word, they'll be your friends. Mm. This kid is autistic. He doesn't understand why it's yeah. a bad thing. And he gets his ass kicked. And the guys who had him do it laughing their asses off. Yeah. And I'm just hearing this, and it pisses me off because sure. this shit's still going on today. Oh, yeah. And I don't think it'll, it'll always go on. It'll mm -hmm. always go on. Mm -hmm. It really will. But again, that's why I love Airsoft, though. Airsoft has introduced me to a group of people who have helped me get out of my soul, who helped me get out of my kind of awkward shell. Yeah. Helped me kind of create my personality of who I want to be and sort of in a weird biblical sense who I was meant to be. Right. And and this is this is going out to everyone out there who has had that issue of just – if you don't know if airsoft's for you or if you don't – if you feel like you're just alone in your life, you feel depressed, give airsoft a try. It, it, it honest to God helped me through some dark times. It helped me get – make a lot of great friends, and it's helped me realize that I am great at making people smile. And if I can make a person smile, as I stated before, way early on in this podcast, either by laughing at me or with me. Or just by laughing at how much of a fool I am, then I've done good. I've helped make your life a little better at least. I've helped mm -hmm. bring a little bit of sunshine to your life. And that's just kind of, hey, that's what I do. And that's why I love Airsoft because Airsoft allowed me to do that. Yeah. Basically, I hit flight there. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned uh, Sector. Was it Sector 9? Uh, what... Yeah, Sector 9 Airsoft. Yeah, where? what area are you from? I forgot to ask you. Uh, I am West Tennessee in okay. Mickey, uh, McNary County. I'm not telling you where because I really don't want people getting shot. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, but where, what uh, What field? Uh, so Sector 9, is that your home home field? Um, It's in Hornsby, Tennessee. It's kind of is now my home field because I okay. started making a lot more content on it. And then, of course, there was Tupelo Airsoft Club, um, which is a privately owned thing, not like a public thing. It's it's ran on this dude's house, basically farm. Mm. And it's really cool. It is really nice. And he does he is legitimately trying to kind of build it up a little bit to kind of do some cool okay. things. And Sector 9 is actually coming out with an anniversary event. Mm. Uh, if you go to their Facebook page right now, they actually have it as well as their YouTube channel now. And they have a, a deal going on. Where if you are on, if you are showing proof that you are subscribed to their Instagram or following on their Instagram and subscribed to their channel, you got five dollars off the fifty dollar entry fee. So you're only paying forty five dollars entry. But this thing is going to have a raffle. It's going to have a night game. It's going to have uh, a swap meet, which I'm going to be bringing a huge box of parts at that swap meet because <laughs> I got a. I am not joking. I've got a huge box of like tactical parts and stuff that I don't want nor need, and I will happily trade or cash with anyone who <laughs> wants these parts. Just take them out of my box of parts. I don't want them. I love retro builds, and I love Magpul builds. 
and I love the sci-fi builds. That's it. Tactical, super tactical, not my bag, man. <laughs> it's not my bag. So you don't want to be part of the Space Marines. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I will happily join the United States Marine Corps, okay? I will, or not the United States Marine Corps. United Nations Space, <laughs> Space Marine Corps, dang it. I will join the Marines of the UNSC. I will happily fight with the Army of the UNSC. I will happily fight alongside the Spartans. But screw Warhammer as of late because Warhammer, I have been turned off of it. Uh-oh. You just broke the internet, bro. <laughs> hey, there's a Amazon, ton of Warhammer fans. Hey, when Amazon starts making a game company like GW basically say, we want female custodians because they're going to be in the show. And to the point where Henry Cavill is like, you knew. You don't got me for the show. Mm -hmm. If you do not take your head out of your ace. Okay, take your head out of your ace. Stop being greedy. Stop being woke. Make yep. it proper Warhammer. That's right. And while, yes, there is more than enough certain material that you may find on certain parts of the internet, that is a good portion of it, that is uh, not to be read and viewed in public. <laughs> um, you do you in terms of that, all right? In terms of fan fiction, I've seen more than enough Space Marine fan fictions, both smut and regular, that I've actually done very, very fucking well. Uh, <laughs> and believe me, there are some pretty good, legitimately good stories when it comes to Warhammer 40k, especially the actual written stuff and then actual fan fiction stuff. Fan fiction, legitimately, a lot of good stories. Yeah. A lot of good stories. A lot of good crossovers, even. Uh, Johnny Boy 11 has done a lot of good Warhammer crossovers, including Halo and Star Wars and Mass Effect and even Valkyria Chronicles. Yes, you heard correctly, Valkyria Chronicles. He has done two Valkyria Chronicles stories. One with Warhammer 40k with a with, with like guardsmen chapters and space marines and stuff like that including sisters of battle he's also done one with generation kill and yes that is exactly what? as cool as you think it is and yes he has written it so fucking well this romanian he just oh that's johnny crazy. boy johnny boy 11 he's, he's literally good go go check him out like he has a wetpad and he's got a fanfiction.net account which seriously go check out his wetpad version his wetpad needs more love but 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 no seriously though <laughs> In all seriousness, though, when, when it comes to just – I do love Airsoft. I really do. And and if you people who are listening or watching this know anything by this point about me, you should know I am someone you could sit down and you can either laugh with or be like, hey, 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 hey. Need you to talk down a little bit around these people. You don't want to get your ass kicked. <laughs> we're not in Tennessee. We're in New York. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I – I swear to God, if I ever go anywhere to California, New York, or any of these big cities, I will probably get my ass kicked. I, I nah. probably <laughs> that's true. I I can run pretty decently. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. The only other reason I would ever want to go to like up north, especially Pennsylvania. Only reason I want to go to Pennsylvania: the George Romero locations. Seriously. Explain that. Okay, so I'm not joking. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, George Romero filmed all of his zombie films in Pennsylvania. Really? In Pittsburgh area. Okay. Like, no joke. They, you can still find these. And a lot of zombie fans legitimately do go on these pilgrimages, yeah. much like in the Mojave or Boston mm -hmm. or D.C. with the Fallout fans. Right. They will go to the locations and buildings where the scenes were filmed and they're still there. Some are still there. Others have sadly been torn down. But thankfully, the mall, the mall from the original Dawn of the Dead, the director's cut and the commentary tracks are actually on YouTube. You can go find those right now. Go ahead and type them in if you want to go watch them after this podcast. They're legitimately good movies still. They still hold up really, really fucking good, even from being from the 70s. Uh, Dawn of the Dead, the mall is still there. And they even have conventions there. And they have the original actors even come back oh, and actually cool. come again. That's the only reason I want to go to Pennsylvania mm. is so I can go to Pittsburgh and I can go to the place where they filmed the first movie. I can go to the places where they had the 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 SWAT team break in, mm. the, the broadcast station, the place oh, where the National cool. Guard was actually deployed. They actually had the Pennsylvania National Guard out in Dawn of the Dead. You can tell who's National oh, Guard cool. and, who's the, and who's an actor in that whole thing. Uh, and, and, of course, going to the mall itself. 
legitimately, I would love to go to that mall and just walk it Mm -hmm. and just take in all of it. Just the fact of they had an entire mall to shoot a movie and their actual anecdotes where people who were early runners, like a bunch of old folks who were just running early in the morning would come in and they would see people literally cleaning up the blood from a kill (laughs) or they would be doing this and that. And it's just like, I would love to be there and just take it all in. I mean, yeah, I'll do a little shopping. Don't get me wrong, but I just want to take it (laughs) all in. Just, just the fact of I am standing in a building where the late great George Romero filmed one of the best zombie films the most quoted zombie film right of all time okay so let me ask you this where do you rate the evil dead the original you did, you did not just ask me about i bruce did campbell you motherfucker. bruce campbell okay, baby okay. come on <laughs> okay 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 when it comes to the evil dead series and i'm gonna first... i'm gonna mention a movie here in a second after you're done that i'll bet you even haven't heard of I will take you up on that. So Evil Dead number one, the first Evil Dead. I'll be honest, still holds up a little bit, still a little goofy, except for one scene that we do not talk about because even the actresses was like, yeah, I don't want to talk about that because (laughs) jokes can be made from the hentai community (laughs) and jokes can be made from the anime community, jokes can be made from the manga community, but for the regular folks like us, I do not talk about that scene. I am not talking about that scene. I'm going to move on to the fact of the effects still somewhat hold up. They've dated a little bit, I'll Mm -hmm. be honest. But the fact that that Sam Raimi and all those actors were able to do what they were able to do on such a short budget and the fact Uh of, oh, yeah, we just have this for the weekend. And we got to make it for the weekend. Yeah. And the fact they were able to do all that and accomplish all that. Mm Mm-hmm blows my mind and i do hold it high i do hold it high up there in terms of an accomplishment much like george romero's night of the living dead they are both classics and should be looked at and studied and understood why and how they succeeded and sort of why and how they were able to pull off what they did with what they had and the budget they had now in terms of evil dead movies i'm sorry evil dead 2 evil dead 2 is my favorite by far only second to Army of Darkness, just because it's <laughs> Army of Darkness, for God's sakes. Flatu <laughs> barata. <laughs> okay, I got one for you. Bruce Campbell movie, Bubba Hotep. Bubba Hotep. I've actually seen that one. You have? I have. Uh, what? Okay. It was on Netflix way, way back in the oh, day yeah. when uh-huh. Netflix was like... We just got to fill up content. We don't care right. what kind of content. That's how you can actually find a lot of like soft core hentai. No joke. They had <laughs> soft core porn on Netflix way back in the day. Uh-huh. And they didn't know. And it's just like, oh, it's just nothing. So I, I want to tell you how I saw this movie because uh, before my illness, before I was paralyzed, okay, when I was partially paralyzed, you know, I'm laying in bed. And uh, mm-hmm. I had, before that, I never got into social media. I never mm-hmm. really watched TV shows. Like people talk about mm-hmm. TV shows, they always. I never. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I'm laid up, I'm I'm watching a shit ton of TV. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have cable, so we just had like the streaming services, you know, Netflix. And um, I would have never seen this movie if if I wasn't you know laying there looking for something to to watch or whatever. So. Uh, that's how it came up. I had, I, and the way I click on things, uh, I, I don't watch trailers. Usually I don't watch a trailer. I'll see the thumbnail. I'm like, oh, okay, let's try it. Right. Especially back then. Cause I was just trying to fill up time. Uh, and I was on steroids. I was like, you know, I was in a weird mental state. So I was very tired, but I couldn't sleep. So, um, I, I watched that movie. It really impacted me. Like I talked about it. I'm telling you, man, my wife was like, dude, if you talk about Bubba Hotep again, I'm going to tell you like, what, what is going on with you? I'm like, <laughs> she's like, it wasn't that good of a movie. I'm like, dude, it impact. I don't know why it was just, I made a connection with it. <laughs> so, so anyway, I always ask people about it. So, so here's, what's actually kind of cool. And this is something I think a lot of people don't know about Bubba Hotep. 
So it was actually based on a novella by the same name of Joe R. Lansdell, which originally appeared in the anthology The King is Dead, Tales of Elvis Postmortem. And yes, I would recommend you check it out. It's actually kind of cool. Um, and originally, and this is what's kind of cool. So originally the film was actually shown as like a road show. Uh, and it only had 32 prints ever made. Mm. Like, honest to God, only 32 prints ever made. But the cool thing is that it actually got a lot of success and actually won the Bram Stoker Award for Best Screenplay. Yeah. And by the time it got like released on DVD, it got cult status yeah, because of the say, fact. It's kind of like a it's, cult classic. Yeah, you know? yeah. And and the cool thing is that even with the lack of access and the inclusion of uh, you know, Campbell, it still got it because it's like Wow, you know, it, 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 there's no way it should have worked. There's no way it should have happened. But yet, because this dude decided to basically take it on the road and literally show it to, like, drive-ins and stuff. Mm. Like, even that's doing wild. it in theaters, like, yeah. like, like, like opening it in limited number of theaters, that's why it got the cult status, because mm. this dude just wanted this thing to succeed. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm all for yeah, it. Yeah, because I like, mean, it is. If if anyone watches the movie, I'm not going to spoil it or anything. But it's like, uh, it's it is kind of slow. Like it's not. There's not. It's not like an action mm-hmm. movie. Okay, it's not like uh, there's not a whole lot of suspense. There's a couple scenes of that, but it is. I don't know what the. I don't know what it was about the story and that char- You know, the character he was playing mm-hmm. just really caught my attention. And I was like, dude, this thing is cool, man. I watched it a couple times, but anyway. Mm -hmm. I always ask Mm -hmm. people if they bring up uh, movies like that or Bruce Campbell or I brought up, you know, Evil Dead. uh, I always ask him about that. And then Bruce Campbell went on to play in a uh, a series that my son fell in love with when he was a teenager. (laughs) That would be Burn Notice. That would be Burn Notice. That's right. (laughs) Yep. I remember Burn Notice. My my grandparents loved it. It was it was just so uh-huh. much fun, and and again, this is where it gets kind of fun, especially again, kind of back into the media stuff, is because again, it's just there's so much stuff, especially when it comes to lost media, that no one even remembers. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was one show, and let me just go ahead and say this right now. When I say the phrase "Starship Troopers." What comes to mind? Bugs. Uh, and also now, current day, hell divers. <laughs> Would you believe me if I told you in the 90s they had a CGI animated show? I would believe you because you seem very knowledgeable about this stuff. I, I didn't know I mean, about it because I didn't watch TV back then. <laughs> well, there's actually a show called The Roughneck Chronicles, which, mm. again, on YouTube, full, for free. Someone actually found the old school DVDs and uploaded the entirety of these things to it. That's and awesome. It's all the campaigns and even introduces the aliens that were from the books, even introduces concepts from the books that are from the book. Why did I say books? <laughs> I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, no, campaigns, <laughs> books. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But no, it introduces a lot of cool concepts, and it just – it was mind-blowing seeing – I mean, yeah, it's aged pretty horribly. And if you guys go and type in Starship Troopers Roughneck Chronicles on YouTube right now, and you find a playlist with all of them in the full, like, hour-plus long length, you will definitely see the CGI has not aged pretty well. But <laughs> – the story has and it's actually better than the movie because it actually kind of takes you on a campaign all the way to earth Mm. where the bugs are about to invade and it left on this big cliffhanger and the development of it was just mind-boggling because there were a lot of things where it's like oh we need you to reshoot this oh we need you to schedule this uh we want it to be scheduled here but in reality we're going to air it during this time where there's not going to be a lot of people watching it but it still has its dedicated fan base to this day. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of familiar voices you'll hear, including one familiar voice actor for Patrick Starr. Mm. Or the uh, guy from the original Stephen King, The Stand, if you know who I'm talking about. No, who? Uh, You know, the mentally challenged man who goes like, you know how that's spelled? 
M O O O means fun. Nope. Seriously, you don't remember no, that? No, I don't dude. remember this. Oh my god, the stand, <laughs> the original stand, Stephen King, the mini series. I read the book. Were... Yeah, the mini series, the original one is a trip. Okay. Because there is at one point where a where a military official, the general, is literally telling people there is no such thing as the super flu. And watching and hearing that, I'm like, <laughs> sounds familiar. <laughs> One of my favorite nostalgia critic things I love to say sometimes is, "Jay, doesn't that sound familiar?" <laughs> like that, I I I do take a lot of influences, especially my rating systems. Like going back to my own content, when I do reviews. I do take a lot of influences from a lot of other critics I grew up with, including the Nostalgia Critic, Doug Walker, uh, Angry uh, Angry Joe, Joe Vargas, uh, James Rolfe, the Angry Video Game Nerd. <laughs> I take a lot of influences from these guys, especially Angry Joe's rating system, and that's actually where I'm – that's where I kind of do. I don't do the point stuff. I do solid numbers when mm. those 1 to 10 – and I have very really rare – and and the big one that actually kind of impacts my score because everyone's like, oh, you shouldn't include this in it. It's like, no, I'm going to include the price tag because not everyone can afford this or justify spending the money for this. Hmm. And even people who are going to say, OK, can I get it on Amazon? And that's kind of the big thing is my intro and my phrase is literally I'm Airsoft Al, the common man's airsofter who reviews bad guns so you don't buy them. <laughs> or a lot of times airsoft now the common man's airsoft are doing budget guns so you know which one to look for mm -hmm. because i will literally look for because i'm in that same situation sure. whenever i whenever i leave the house i'm usually given like 60 bucks for the weekend mm -hmm. and that's how much i've raised that's how much i've gotten from doing like farm work and stuff and basically helping on the family farm and that's basically my budget for a weekend yeah, And I have to make that last. And if there's a game the next day, I will usually spend maybe 20, uh, maybe 40 bucks at most, or maybe like 30 something dollars at most, and have like $25 at least left over for being able to go into Sector 9 and being able to go have fun. And then, of course, I meet a lot of the other guys there who are – some of them are, of course, budget-oriented, mm -hmm. and they are looking at this, and they're thinking, okay, you know what, what, what what's a good like beginner gun to kind of get into? And a lot of times people will be like, oh, yeah, you got to get this hundred-plus dollar one. You got to get this one that's like over $200. You got to get this one here <laughs> that doesn't come with a battery or a smart charger or anything. Me, on the other hand, I will look at them and be like, well, you've got a couple of options, but I'm going to ask, what's your budget? Oh, your budget's like 80 bucks. Well, there's this ASG M4 right here, or Double Eagle M4, that is basically a V2 gearbox, is rear wired, is a small, stubby, compact M4, but still has V2 parts and can take AR magazines that we have and it comes with a 300 round high cap for mm. about $60. That That's leaves good. you about $30 left over to get a battery and smart charger. Yeah, it's a great beginning. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. Boom! Didn't have to spend over her bucks. You got no, like, especially for somebody that's if they're brand new, they're getting into it. They're not going to play every single weekend. Mm -mm. Most most uh, new airsofters don't aren't able to play every weekend. So mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that's a great point. Well, listen, dude, it's been uh, awesome talking with you. Um, let everybody know where where they can find all your stuff, and then I want to find, and then let everybody know where you're going to be. Uh, if somebody <laughs> wants to find you on the field, like a sector nine mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, do you have a schedule of events you want to go to or, um, I'm mostly locked down to West Tennessee, mm -hmm. but you guys can find me at all American airsoft media, or as it's lovingly known, a, a airsoft media. And you guys can find me at sector nine. Like they have a schedule on their discord. They literally will post what days are open okay. on their discord. So if you guys can go to sector nine airsoft on Facebook, go to the discord. I'm in their discord and you guys can find me on the field. I'm usually doing crazy loadouts. Like last time was a PMC loadout. The day before was like a CIA spook loadout <laughs> from the cold war. Nice from Africa. And awesome. before you ask the question, what's the CIA doing in Africa during the cold war? 
<laughs> you just answered your own question there, dingus. It's the CIA <laughs> in Africa during the Cold War. <laughs> Which, let me, let me just say this right now. There's something for you to try out if you want to do a CIA operative loadout. Mm -hmm. During the Cold War, like the 70s and 80s, it was literally just camo bottoms, black boots, plain button-up shirt. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And, and, and it was just like Alice gear and mm -hmm. or a load-bearing vest. And I'm just like, okay, then. Let's do this. <laughs> and 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 <laughs> I had a lot of fun rocking that loadout. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but, yeah, you guys can find me at Sector 9 in terms of actually going out in airsofting, or you guys can find me in the Sector 9 Discord. Um, I'm in other discords as well for like authors and stuff, but that's just basically, Hey, that's if you want to do that rabbit hole and you want to go down that fucking rabbit hole and you want to try and find <laughs> right. my jackass, but you can find me on sector nines discord where I can talk with you guys. You can find me in us airsofts discord, which again, that's that one discord. They want me to promote that. They asked me to promote that. I'm like, eh, here, I'll promote it. There's no problem. But if you You're guys about, actually, uh, want Scott, right? Uh, no, not Scott Slade holding back, just another dude. Like, oh, yeah, U.S. airsoft community, basically. It's like, oh, you know, okay. strictly okay. U.S. airsoft community. But yeah, the okay. other thing, though, ladies and gentlemen, and this is something I'm going to plug my own stuff. Um, If you're on my channel and you want to help out my content, I do actually do requested media reviews. It may take me a bit because, again, depending on what tier list you do, uh, you know, you can basically go through that. Uh, it's the tier list is always promoted at the starts of my reviews and stuff. So you can see, you know, there's my, but there's your budget thing for me to do whatever pages, however many chapters you want. The other thing though, is from our partners, our partners being of course, two awesome folks. One is Italian. They make nine millimeter blank adapters for Thunderbees. I'm getting some nine millimeter blanks in the reviews coming. I promise I'm not George R. R. Tolkien. Okay. I'm not, <laughs> Tol no, I'm not him. I'm get, I mean, or Martin, Martin, George, or I was going to say, what? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm in Martin. I'm in Martin. I'm not, I'm not doing the dragons are coming. No, the blanks are coming. They're actually coming. They will be here. I promise you. And I will be doing the review on this after because it's actually kind of cool. It's Italian, not Beretta, but it's still Italian. Nice. Uh, or not even Benelli, but it's still Italian, you know? <laughs> um, and finally, from our friends, if you want to light up the night, check out T238. And believe me, they are actually kind of cool. They do really affordable tracer units that actually – one of my favorite ones is the Spitfire. It literally is a three-in-one tracer unit that mm. does Nerf, Gel Ball, and Airsoft. What? Yes. Three-in-one for under – wait for it – 40 bucks. Holy cow. Or they may have raised the price. I don't know. Again, depending yeah. on you know how under a hundred dollars for for real. That's uh, impressive. Not even a hundred. Not even a hundred dollars. It's like yeah. under like eighty and seventy dollars. Mm -hmm. Like this is one of those affordable ones that again you can basically use for whatever the hell you want, and legitimately it works. I've done a review on it. Go check it out. I even did a review on the Griffin. Go check that out, and it actually works very well for like cyberpunk builds because it's a triangular cyberpunk looking. Oh, nice. Like tracer unit specifically made for airsoft and they are they they embody the kiss keep it simple stupid mm -hmm. their tracer units are dummy proof nice their instruction manuals are dummy proof unlike oh i don't know ace tech Every other stupid <laughs> tracer unit brand ever because of course they can't exactly give us a freaking diagram to tell us hey this is what the thing actually does <laughs> right no, seriously, like T238 actually legitimately does do awesome stuff. Go check them out, guys. Go check out the other, go check out Bray Tech as well. Bray Tech is an Italian company. You can find their links on my channel. Any any purchase gun from them helps us out in the long run. So, you know, whatever you can do, including you, uh, you, you my friend, you might actually like these guys. Again, it's a 9 millimeter blank adapter that literally takes your Thunder B. And turns it into a nine millimeter blank grenade. <laughs> Impact that sounds awesome with a really strong magnet. Like I, I, I'll talk about in the video, but when, when the blanks come in, but yeah, no, this magnet is strong. Like you're mm. not you're not gonna ax have an accidental set off. No, it is basically you're pulling that pin, and the only way you're going to have this thing go off is if it impacts hard. Mm. Like it's basically you have to. Throw this sucker or really you, launch it. Yeah, and you basically just 
chuck it in a room and it'll go off. <laughs> um, again, it's chuck a nine it. millimeter. Yeah, it's, it's literally a nine millimeter blanket adapter. Unlike me, who sadly hurt his knee trying to throw a grenade at Sector Nine Airsoft, which uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that I, I still can't believe I upload that short video up to Facebook on my on my Facebook. Jesus Christ. Oh, it'll but be yeah. okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're actually Sector Nine Airsoft is actually building up on their field, and they are hosting build days. So if you guys want to go help build stuff, and you want to go be con- like contractors for a day, not the uh, you know the sleazy Italian kind, but you know the actual <laughs> legitimate <laughs> handyman kind, go check them out. They're really cool guys. But yeah, again, awesome. That's that's all I gotta say, and that's where you can find me, guys. And uh, it's been fun being on. Yeah, here. I'm man, happy I that, appreciate the, that, you, Alex. that green. Uh, brought me on i mean if you want me to come on anymore as another guest just let me know just hit me up in advance so oh I can dude clear a schedule yeah we'll we'll uh we'll we'll get you and um uh sergeant major green on here together and just riff <laughs> <laughs> oh you're hosting a riffing party don't worry i got movies i got movies we'll, we'll pull this thing off mst3k style <laughs> oh shit uh, thanks again alex i appreciate you man i hope you have a good night and uh listen you up too. everybody go go uh, check out all his stuff i'll have all your links on here and um, go check out our sponsors. Thanks to our sponsors again, Skirmish and Jackal Tactical. All mm-hmm. right, brother. Have a good night, man. You too, man. All right, and good ya. night, everyone else. This has been Airsoft Al. Thanks to Trey Tech. And I shall see all you lovely, lovely people in the next video with this lovely older man here. <laughs> Till next time. 